chilling here. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Jetty Jet Show. Welcome. Hey, I'm Jet, Jetty Jet, and uh today we got a we got a crazy show for you guys. We got an amazing guest with us. Mr. That Kid Who Can Draw. No that kid. <laughs> that hey, Mr. That Kid Who Draws. How you doing? Once a kid is now a man. I'm hanging in there, buddy. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Awesome. Hear me okay? Sure can. Okay, and uh, anybody, please let us know if you guys can hear us good. I just uh, always got to do the sound check first. We got Marcio Vetromilla. Hello, what's up? He says, he says hello, Jetty. What's up, Marcio? Let us know if you can hear us. We will not start the show. I am late. I'm late. What am I not? Yeah, late? that's my fault. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. It's my fault. It's always my fault. Cause I I could have I could have gotten this started. We literally just like hopped on twenty minutes ago before the stream. Doesn't sound like a kid to me. <laughs> yep. <son. laughs> no, he's not. He's not. Definitely not a kid. He's a grown ass man. I'm a grown man. I've been doing this for a long time. I was a kid when I started this. Yeah. And then I aged a little bit. And then comic conventions aged me like <laughs> twice as fast. And glad, glad you can join us. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, man. So yeah, so today we're just gonna take it easy, like we do. This is a new series. We're just sketching with Jetty, sketching with Jetty, and then we have our special guest on. And today we have Mr. Alex Yaccarino. Um, definitely go check out his stuff. It's all, all of his stuff is in the description. But we're gonna go over all that in this in this show. So it's been a while, man. When, when was the last time we did something on a stream together? Uh, I think it was uh, right after our last convention in like March. It was when everything was like crumbling before us. Oh, <laughs> the ground was opening yep. up, swallowing. It must everybody. have been right after C two E two then. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I was still working with on my Griffith poster that I hadn't finished yet yeah and then right. you were working on that griffith dang yeah, my ninja bro got to go to bed all right man go to sleep good night <laughs> but yeah uh yeah yeah you're working on griffith griffith and now today we're working yeah, on was a while. there you're live you're 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 live yeah carino i'm live yeah, i'm alive, alive? You're like, we're all like, oh, like my screen is live. Yeah. Oh, you're on. Say hi. Fun. Say hi to the camera. Looking hella on, smooth. Guys. Look at yeah, that setup. Keep... Yeah. You're putting me to shame, man. It's not fair. No, it I is. I used to have uh, another yeah. Cintiq. I had my Mobile Studio Pro to the left of this one, and I was, uh, it's like rocking two Cintiqs, and that was. Uh... Yeah. That was a little too much. That was a little extra. So right now I just have the thirty-two. Oh, man, that's a clean setup. I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta up my game. That's goals right there. I dig it, man. The TV, like the the TV, is pretty dope. It's something I noticed in like a lot of animator studios is they all had these like little tiny TV VCR combos. Yeah. And they would just like loop stuff. So. I'm like watching it here now, but I'll like pop in like VHSs and stuff. Yeah. Or I got a special adapter where the PlayStation 3 is connected to it, and oh, I'll um, I'll just like stream, uh, you know, just like crazy weird old stuff on loop. I just keep it going Man. for like hours. That's a shop right there. That's an art studio in your house. Lately, I started streaming. Uh, you ever see those like 4K videos of yeah. just dudes walking around in Tokyo. I've just been streaming that. <laughs> just, <laughs> like getting a taste of the outside world. Just, just like touching the screen. Like, oh, <laughs> I remember the outside. <laughs> Dang. Where's my pencil? So yeah, what are you what are you working on? Is that is that Jubei? It is from Ninja Scroll. 
Oh my my name just grown. I have to watch that at least once every year. It's uh, mandatory so, viewing. Yeah. I feel like a lot of us watched that like back in the day as kids. Like, yeah. Um, questionable blockbuster rental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I got like a couple drafts of where I'd like it to be. Yeah, you guys remember? You guys remember Alex? They said they said nice Ninja Scroll. They said, "Oh shit, it's Jubei. It is Jubei. Jubei Kibukami. Oh, he's so cool. He's so cool. Looks so like legit. A couple, uh, couple versions. Right now, it's just like in the early phase where I'm blocking it out. Um, yeah. Because I do move stuff around so often that I I try and um, I try and uh, keep it separated. So like, where is it? Yeah, so like the sword's its own group and mm -hmm. the arm and the hand. Hell yeah. Shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It looks <laughs> so, so clean. It's so yeah, clean. Like, that's its own thing. That's its own thing. <laughs> you know, because I'll change the composition so much. Yeah. I'll be like, okay, maybe the sword should have gone. Fenris you know, is. I'm not right here. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. No, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I think I know where it's going. That's kind of digging that. What's what's this dude's Twitter? <laughs> everything is everything is that kid who draws, isn't it? I'm I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, just yeah, under the same handle, keep it streamlined. Definitely check at that kid who draws. Man, have you ever heard of uh, Brusherator? Or like you? Oh, you use Clip Studio, don't you? Yeah. Okay, well then, never mind. Because a lot of this, I think, is impressive. But the more I learn about Clip Studio, I think it's like standard inside Clip Studio. Like, <laughs> like I've, I've been messing with scripts and yeah. uh, special extensions in Photoshop to do things. Yeah, yeah. And I spent like all last year getting into hotkeys and special scripts. Yeah. And then I watch a few YouTube videos on Clip Studio after artists like yeah. like you, like people I know are sort of. Uh, are pushing for Clip Studio, and it's like, oh, Clip Studio's got a button that does the five things to do, like an ink fill or yeah, you know, a stroke. It's so annoying. Yeah, I mean, it's great that that's there, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's. On it, yeah. They they're kind of sleeping, you know, they're sleeping on it because uh, the competition is like they're they're picking up on these things that just make it very convenient and efficient to work. Like a lot of the stuff you would you would imagine Photoshop picking up already. Like you, sh they should have already been on it. I just wonder. It, it's like it's for photographers or something. Like digital, like digital painters are not their. That's right. Priority. That's right. The That's stuff right. in Clip Studio is like it's just so amazing. Lauren and I will watch a video of uh, like like okay, so like for color fills, right? Yeah. Like, um, uh, like here where I'm doing my flats, if I wanted to mm -hmm. add like a, uh, you know, I'd do a lasso mm -hmm. and then I'd, uh, you know, fill it and then I'd stop or I'd, uh, I have even made like a special script to, it wasn't their color, but you know, just auto fills and then find out in clip studio, there's a tool that's like, you just use the lasso, make the selection. Yeah. And then that it's like lasso fill or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. There's yeah. It's right there. It's there. There's there. Unbelievable. There's some there's some crazy it's, stuff on there. Some crazy stuff. Some crazy I mean, like, stuff. Uh, like it sort of auto fills line art, or it, like mm -hmm. like the gaps don't have to be perfectly closed. completely closed. Yeah. You can fill with some sort of like allowance for like a three or five pixel gap or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That some, mean. some gaps can be really big too. As long as it, 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 it figures out the, I don't know how to s explain it, but. <laughs> That's my dog. Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> Boma. Hey. So Come funny. Here. He it's has okay. a dog named Boma. I have a dog named Boma. We both have uh, yeah, Boma. Yeah, that's right. So funny. She's a tiny little Frenchie, but if she hears a noise outside, she'll go crazy. She'll fight for the death. <laughs> yeah, Rick Marshall, Ninja Scroll, thumbs up. 
Hell yeah, man. I got the VHS for that. Oh, the man, DJ that's and, and DVD. VHS, Ninja Scroll. Man, back in the day when you had your VHSs, you you valued your 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 movies. You watched it like a hundred times. You couldn't binge through seasons. That, like, that's all you had. That's that's what you were stuck with. <laughs> it's so much work. Like I bought the entire collection of Dragon Ball. Oh and you, either, sh- and you don't really like watch it or think about it, or at least you know it's how yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. It will just loop like the same four episodes because I. I don't like pull the VHS tape out, put the new one in. Like I forget. Wait, about it those. it loops it? Does it does it rewind it and play it? Yeah, this one does. You can program it to auto repeat the VHS. So it's like I'm like doubly wearing out. Oh whatever. man, it's like, dude, it'll, 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 where it just goes on repeat for. Like, <laughs> it gets <laughs> it gets better with with age. Yeah. It's so funny how that's become a thing now. But eventually, it'll just like wear out where it's unwatchable. It's just like it's distorted. Like, I bought I bought a couple like that off eBay. <laughs> where they just they're so messed up. Like it, yeah. they're so uh, so worn out. Well, does Clip Studio have? Um, can't I don't know if you can see my mouse movements on your screen, but you see me circling. This, yeah, I see it. Mm-hmm. These panels here, yeah. dude. These have been amazing. Being able to customize these uh, these guys here. These like few. Custom panels with just things that I do really quickly. Oh, uh, with the color coding and all that. Oh, yeah. They're like color coded uh, for like functions and stuff. And that's Photoshop Uh, right there? uh, It's a Photoshop script or a Photoshop extension called uh, Crusher Raider. I've never seen anything like that for for Clip Studio. It's pretty dope. Like, Like I just got one that like closes all my groups immediately. These are all my layers. This is my layer navigation. Like... Yeah. This, uh, I mean, these layers are like huge. When all these folders are opened, like this thing spans up and down, and that's like all my arms and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like having to go here, here, here. So instead, it just smart select the layer, and then I, you know, move it, mm-hmm. do this. Got shortcuts for like I can like toggle black and white if I'm just trying to check Dang. my tones. And um, and I just a lot of like selection modifiers, but honestly, all of these are to fill, uh fill those selections which i mean half of this panel would be unnecessary if i actually had clip studio and it could do hmm. or photoshop could do all the things that clip studio does who knows? like so much of this would be pointless who knows but you've gotten used to it right you got the quick quick control hotkey yeah i mean at this point it's second nature i'm rocking uh the the wacom express key which is just nuts um i think i've got uh, but this document here is like a shortcut for me to remember because I keep it to the side. Sometimes I forget. I've got almost all these memorized, but uh, if it's in black, yeah. it's what it defaultly does if I just press the button. And yeah, yeah. I got the, uh, I don't know if you've seen the Wacom art pen, but it's got like a third button on it. Oh, so wow. I use these as like modifiers. So when I'm pressing one button in particular, all of the buttons on this change functions to what is the mm-hmm. blue text wow so you know this is my brush <laughs> and i press this button and press this button it then becomes an ink fill or uh and then you can press some buttons at the same time like the middle one is control so then everything around it controls a modifier so then like control r then becomes yeah like, fit stuff like that you gotta you gotta do a you gotta do a breakdown just on that alone eventually like a video for that yeah, be really been, useful because that's like that's an extension of who you are. It's like you're a robot. It's kind of <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like it's kind a of cyborg. Like, it would be more than one video. It'd be like a freaking lecture at this point. Yeah. So I'm breaking it down into beginner, intermediate, and advanced a hotkey and controls for digital art because it's kind of like a lot of things, like yeah. like because there's the hotkey controller, and then I don't know if you've you've mess with key manager or any like custom scripts but uh like at the same time to get the controller to do that many things Mm -hmm. i have key manager running where is it yeah so then this program here changes what uh so like if you press right alt and left control and r you know it does something different as opposed to like trying to reach like six different buttons Mm -hmm. and that only works in photoshop 
Yeah, I, I always see that function, I, and I get confused, so I just, like, it's over my head. I don't want to... Alt, Control, Shift. That's like a third set of keys when you do that, right? It's, uh, like, 52 keys, I think. Because I can also change what happens when you press the key for more than, like, two seconds or more... Or, or like, point zero two seconds or... That, to me, is... Like, at that point, just use the freaking keyboard, which mm. I've got one on a arm right here to my left that like is always on this arm here and i'll use if i have to but i don't like uh what has it been like nine years of sitting at a cintiq where my arm is just freaking to the <laughs> to always the, to the left to the left my shoulder my arm's killing me yeah. it looks like i'm it looks like i'm like my hands down here in my crotch all weird in the webcam <laughs> It's actually up, so I've got the key, and then I'm like leaning on my armrest into this antique. And I know it's bad for my back, but like I'm, that's how I like comfortably draw now, as yeah. opposed to like having to be in a position where you're kind of spread out and you're always touching the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. Like I'll even like put my hand over my head and I'll like do yeah. this if I need to like stretch, and I can still do like everything I need to do. I can navigate, rotate. And... Yeah, you have your you have your antique flat almost. That's always Almost a, flat, that's, yeah. that's a lot of leaning for that. I like to lean into it, man. I can't like. You gotta lean into it. I, I know the proper way the form would be to do this. Slightly tilt it, yeah, standing. I'm just saying that's that's on your back right there, leaning all the time. <laughs> I can yeah, I can afford to hurt my back. It's it's my shoulder and uh, oh. the wrist that it's been. It's like adding up. Oh man. It's been hurtful. Tarfon. How do you do it? How do you? What's your setup? It's just a stand up. It's a, it's a. Yeah, it's it stands. It's like elevated by like seventy degrees or something. And because I have like my 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 thumb barely works anymore, I turn up my sensitivity all the way up. So I, I'm barely even touching the screen, and it makes a mark. And oh, so nice. I don't, yeah, I don't even like require, I don't even use pressure anymore. So I'm just, how do you get tapered? How do you get tapered lines then? Like, how do you, um, I think, do I think cause clip studio has the, it, has, it naturally gets that tapering and I can still control tapering. I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't manually create the taper on like a traditional sense where like you're releasing the pressure as you're going through the line. Which what? is probably the better way of drawing lines, right? It's actually that's artificial, or I mean, that's like made through that's a software end, not no. It's, it's no, it's just a matter of just um, stroking it really quickly, just so. Um, oh, you don't gotta tell me about. <laughs> you gotta give it a little, it a little quick. Well, let me tell you about some stroking here. I'm a pro that's, at this. Yeah, that's another thing. Clip Studio just has Photoshop beat on is. Um, like the built-in pen settings. Yeah, the 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 lines got this nice um, taper automatically. The lines are just, just just amazing. But so your wrist and thumb are just chilling, and it's all in your wrist movements. Yeah. Um. But right now I'm getting this 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 uh this. If you see my screen through YouTube, give me some I of these, do. getting some of these boxy lines because of um my latency. I'm getting lag for some reason. It's because probably I'm sharing recording and also getting your screen. I gotta figure out how to get that out. There, that's a little bit better. But yeah, I just there's a this is an automatic ta taper with every stroke, and that's that's the that was the biggest draw for me uh, of getting and using Clip Studio and investing in it. I saw that once I w once I saw how the lines taper, I was like, oh yeah, I'm sold. I don't have to because I know it actually it actually is I think really benef beneficial if you can if you can manually create the taper by releasing your pressure like some artists do it's hell on your like I I actually increase it where I have to dig in because I have a heavy hand and it's just like hell on my wrists and thumbs no I'm 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 literally imagine trying to like pet like stroking like a let's <laughs> <laughs> keep going back to this like you're like you're giving you're stroking your girlfriend's hair like out of her face like like really soft. That's no, all... exactly what you mean. I try it sometimes. Like I'll set the sensitivity to a point and then, you know, I'll give like my my wrist a break or I'll mm -hmm. give my thumb a break, but then I don't get those tapered lines at all. So I'll, I'll if I've been drawing for like six hours, like yeah. I'll switch over to that 
and then I'll just do like my fills or like something monotonous. See, like, look, like if I just did this, look, it's let, let's let's look how let's look at how um sensitive it is right now. I'm gonna pull up my it's it's up max. Like I told you, my my thumb I, I can't press down anymore. Out of commission. I've been pressing down too much. Uh, let me go to your screen first. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I gotta like see what my Wacom settings are. Yeah, mine are like super stupid firm. Cintiq. Oh, here it is. I know what it is. Duh. Duh. Calibration to feel. Current. Tell me about the tip feel. <laughs> Yeah, I know I say this every time. Like, I'm sure I complained about this the last time I, we were doing this and I was working on my Griffith piece, but like yeah. creating art for screen print is such a rewarding but like monotonous <laughs> task that it's driving me nuts. Because I did this, I already like did like a rough shade and like that's pretty much where I like that shading wise. Like there's some pretty rough areas with the you know, like where the gradients meet and there's like some overlapping here, but like this is where I tried not to zoom in past like 50%. This is where I like it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Disable all of that, go back to the flats and now try and recreate that with, uh, <sighs> with, uh, the gradients, yeah. you know, this, the, the shading technique that transfers over to screen print. Yeah. It's like having to paint this stuff two times over. Man. Huh. I cannot relate with that. Paint that over two times. All right, I'm gonna get to work here. I gotta finish this. I gotta finish this. Let's see how fast I can do this. I'm gonna try to do all the colors, but I'm gonna set up my flats for this first, and then let's see it. Okay, good. Whew, I lost the connection real quick. I don't know about OBS, but we're back. We're back. Yeah, we were streaming. For, we streamed for like three, four hours, and we talked for like another three hours, four hours, like 7 a.m. in the morning. It just doesn't stop. Crazy. That was that uh, early quarantine energy. <laughs> yeah. How are you holding up now? It's been like two months. Two months. Are you staying productive? It had to have been two months since we did that stream together, right? Am I being productive? I kind of. I I'm at I'm at like forty percent. I feel like forty fifty percent maybe. I definitely always can do more. How about you? I'm like twenty percent. Twenty percent. Dude, I'm like I'm taking advantage of the time. I'm <laughs> I like surrendered to the reality of the situation pretty early. <laughs> I've been catching up on video games. Like oh. I went back and I finally played some Spider-Man. Uh, beat that. Oh shoot! Nice. Uh, played a little bit of The Last of Us Two. Oh. Um, and uh, just a bunch of like. Did you beat that? Switch games. What, what? The The Last of Us? Yeah. No. No, I did not. Lauren and I gave up on it. Like. <laughs> two thirds of the way in and just watch like the ending on YouTube uh, for now. But in, in all fairness, we had just played the remaster, which uh, she watched me play. So it was her first time mm -hmm. experiencing The Last of Us. And then it was oh. my probably like third or fourth time playing it, but I hadn't played it in a long time. Like it had been a minute. Wait, you guys went through the remaster you said? Yeah. So we had just finished the remaster uh -huh. jump too, and it's like, you know, we're, we're kind of bored. It's like, man, I feel like I was just looking in filing cabinets and throwing bricks at people. And, <laughs> you know, and now it's just more of that. And, except when it wasn't. I, mean, it was like, <laughs> I have not played it. I've only, I did play just the, uh, the intro part, like a good hour or so. Um, Cause my brother had it. And when he was living with me, um, he put it on for me and uh, played the first last of us. And I was blown away. And I can tell they could, it's an incredible game, so it deserves to be like way up there with the greats. But then, um, second one, 
I watched a lot of the walkthrough. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the walk. Just watched it. I said, just watch it. And for me, man, all I got to say is that game is beautiful. <laughs> that game is the most stunning game that I've seen out of the PS4 so far. So good looking. Yeah, it's incredible how much uh, work they put into it. Um, yeah. As far as the whole... A lot of people, though. A lot of people are like ride or die for that game, man. Like yeah. you, you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. There's no room for notes. There's no room for... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's, like, it's a lot it invested is. in that game, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It's I've only found like a couple people that I feel like I can relate to that had the same experience. Like oh. everyone else that doesn't like the game. Uh, decided before they even tried it mm -hmm. that they hated it right. or didn't even give it a shot because of leaks or something right yeah it's, it's what it, yeah that, that's it's like own thing like just objectively looking at it i was like yeah i had some thoughts but it gets wrapped up in what it is and, and we don't have to get into it but yeah I, love, we, I mean the first one so much man like i told you i did work for naughty dog like yeah. it was actually like one of my first commercial gigs oh Wow, was working for Naughty Dog. Hell I yeah. did. Uh, I created w what's officially like the first piece of Last of Us fan art that ever existed. Huh. When I decided I was going to do poster stuff, like back in early 2012. Um, Hell yeah! I was under the belief that you just kind of had to like make stuff, <laughs> kind of pro bono, you know, like when you're early on, you yeah. eat it. You just have to prove that you can do the work if you want to get hired for it. So mm -hmm. I just kind of threw a dart at the board, and I was like, "Oh, the Last of Us is." This new video game coming out that looks kind of cool. Because <laughs> Neil, uh, Neil had posted on his Twitter like a lot of BBC Earth, yeah, put it like clips of cordyceps. Uh, cordyceps? Is that a mushroom? Parasite. Uh, it's a parasite. Hmm. Uh, super dope, but it like changes based on the species of insect that it attaches to. But it ultimately does the same hmm. thing in that it makes it. Uh, it, like mind controls it to go to the center of a hive or a colony and then it will self-destruct pretty much the parasite comes out of the head explodes into spores Damn. um it's pretty pretty gnarly i but it's like i had already known about those i thought those were so cool like i'm a big fan of parasites and stuff like oh it's like a parasite when i went to japan this yeah. last time like one of the first places we went was the parasite museum and uh what that's tight Tokyo. yeah it is I, never heard of that. Gross, but I thought it was so dope Oh, yeah. uh, but like so I just made the based off like the game footage like we'd only seen like a shot of a clicker mm -hmm. and then there was the trailer that was the in-game footage flex and that was it so then I made the poster and uh, hoping to catch like so, like another client's attention but it mm -hmm. actually caught Neil's attention and he was like this is the first fan art of The Last of Us I think that we've seen mm -hmm. you know like what about you know like what's going on and I was like, dude, I'm so pumped. Like, I'm, you know, it's like cordyceps. I see what you're doing. I see where this is going. This is going to be fucking dope. Mm. Um, and then we just got to talking, and he got me uh, in a conversation with some PlayStation people. Mm -hmm. And together, we uh, they hired me to do another poster, but one to be made into, like, an exclusive PAX Prime 2012, like, poster that they were going to give away at the event, like an exclusive deal. So then I, uh, I ended up doing that for them. And that was like one of my first like big uh, client gigs for just like freelance commercial illustration, like throwing stuff into the ether. Yeah. And they were so cool, man. They were like, like they were awesome. I was in LA for uh, a art show that I was in at Gallery 1988. Uh, I think it was an art show for the Star Trek II movie mm -hmm. coming out. Like, you know how those, like, those California galleries always do, like, a, I mean, it's like advertising, but it's, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, it's a gallery show. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of like a big commercial project where, like, 15 artists make a piece of art inspired by a movie that they haven't even seen yet. And so, you know, I, I, I did a piece for that and I was there, or, like, near Santa Monica. Yeah. And I hit up the project manager and uh, this was two weeks before The Last of Us came out and they, like still weren't done with the game oh. there's like some sort of in, in naughty dog studios there's like a server or a center or something that's like uh 
with like a master cut. I don't, I don't know how it works. I don't, I don't, I don't know how game studios work. But he was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm in town, and he was like, cool, everything's <laughs> chaos over here, but we'll give you a tour. So yeah. You know, but there was like super cool. Like Neil took the time to say, "Hey, I got to see the Naughty Dog's theater room, which is like insane." Yeah. Um, Damn. And like all this, while like there's literally like people running back and forth between cubicles, and you know it's like a movie. Like like there's like paper flying in the air. <laughs> like, oh my god! I'm to <laughs> Amongst all that, they were like, "Oh, this is the dude that did the art for the poster." It was oh, in the shit. art book and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, sweet." Like, and then they were like, you know, I, if, I mean, if that were me, I'd be like, if I, like under crunch time, I can't give anything else my attention. And I might even be a bit of a dick, like, yeah. you know, but these dudes were like super cool. And uh, they gave me like a statue bust of a clicker. Oh, shit. And they, the whole team like signed an art book and everything. And I mean, they're just like the coolest people. It was a great client, yeah. fun time, an amazing game. Like I can't. It's from the first, the first one, right? You're talking about. Yeah, the first one. I, I can't yeah, praise. Back, yeah. Not even, and I mean, Uncharted's obviously awesome. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have an axe to grind against these people at all, but I just, I was kind of underwhelmed with this second game. Game. He said it. He said it. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but, I mean, Uncharted 4, Last of Us, those are two of my, like, yeah. absolute, those are definitely in the top 10 favorite games of all time. Yeah. I can see why. Sure. That gig was when uh, I bought my first Cintiq. Mm -hmm. I was working on an Intuos 3 for years. And then when Naughty Dog, uh, or when PlayStation cut me a check, uh, got a down payment on the job, mm -hmm. which was like weird. I always, that was something I always did because my grandfather taught me, like, that's how you do it. You always get paid 50% up front. <laughs> like, oh. And then, you know, I tried talking to them and they're like, well, we've got like a whole finance department. Like, it'd just be easier to start cutting you the whole check now. <laughs> you would get it by the time the job's done. And I was yeah. like, listen, these are my, you know, like, <laughs> I was all business and shit. I was yeah. like 20, 21 years old. And I'm yeah, like, listen, this is how I do business. And Damn. if you want, you know, so they sent me half up front before the job started but after like rough drafts mm -hmm. and uh i like immediately bought a used cintiq 21 ux uh the second gen so it's like the gray squares the dark gray squares not the light gray ones mm -hmm. so i went from an intuos 3 to a cintiq 21 and then as soon as that cintiq came in the mail mm -hmm. i had to get used to it and create a piece of art within two weeks for the client with is... it and i already like sold off the intuos so no <laughs> you know the intuos you're talking about the, the the drawing pad right without the screen it's, it's just a drawing tablet i mean pad yeah the intuos was three uh, it's like just a gray slab and then uh, it's like the bamboo or the graphite yeah, yeah 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 i used that for the longest time too but i was just saying there's a there is like a there's a disconnect when going from uh, for me that when i was going from the tab to the to Cintiq. Like there was a weird disconnect for some reason because I was so used to drawing with like for like 10 years on the tablet, anticipating the strokes, you know, kind of kind of envisioning. You're not looking at directly at the screen. You're looking indirectly at the cursor. And then there was this it's like disconnect when I was using Cintiq. It was like I was still trying to anticipate lines, but I'm like looking right at it. You're supposed to just draw directly on it. My brain made this this weird separation that I can I couldn't get over for the longest time. Did it happen well, to you? It's like I tell people, you, you draw, if you're drawing, uh, it's your sense of scale in the program. So in Photoshop or Clip Studio, if you're at 10% or 100% zoomed in, it doesn't matter. If you're on an Intuos, a line mm -hmm. is your wrist from point A to point B, like a quarter circle turn. Yeah. And that could be a line that's a foot long or an inch long, depending on your scale inside the software. But right. it's always just, with the smaller tablets, it's always your hand in a stationary position and your wrist is just flicking up and down, up and down. Right. And then on the Intuos, you're actually planting your elbow, you're drawing with your whole arm again, and mm -hmm. in the actual space, you can draw a line you know, the whole stroke or a tiny little, uh, you know, the weirdest thing that actually helped me get over this weird disconnect. And I don't know if it's like this, this affects other people, 
but for me to get over it, I was able to, um, what I did was I, I went back to my, to my tablet when I was getting like my Instantique repaired or something. I, I wasn't using it for a bit. I went back to the tablet, started using that for a while. And then I came back to the Cintiq and all of a sudden my, my mind was like, like no disconnect. Oh, there's always a disconnect, but it was like very minimal, you know, there's just that, that small little barrier of screen be, be, between your pen and the screen. Um, but other than that, it was, just, it was the weirdest thing. It was as if I was sync synchronized with it. Like I was plugged into the, the Cintiq. And that was because Sometimes I catch up on Craigslist and look at like Intuosis and I'm like always debating picking one up <laughs> for like 20 bucks or something. Do I need a third one? Hmm. It just I, cause I, I, I thought for a while, like exactly what you're talking about. Like that would work for me. Like if I could just go back to what I used for a minute, maybe I could remember some mannerisms or techniques mm -hmm. or tricks. Or something. It was the weirdest feeling. And I, I, I'm almost like, so what is injected my brain with like the appropriate like muscle memory to do it. It was just so, it was so weird. I went back to it. I was like, Whoa, look at this. I'm doing it. I'm fly. I'm flying. <laughs> well, I, I know for sure that I would take my time. Like when I had the Intuos three, it had a surface of maybe like mm -hmm. nine by 13 inches. It was yeah. the XL one, but still small comparatively. And yeah. I would move so slow. Yeah and with purpose and then my strokes on the Cintiq are just whatever's in front of you know just right. the time I'm slapping the pen and just slapping you know, the pen <laughs> slapping that Sh pen slapping the pen <laughs> or here's that slapping that pen slapping in the room <laughs> yeah we posted a video of me uh, on Instagram using the Cintiq not too long ago yeah. and you can like hear the pen carving into the screen. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like every stroke is like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Be gentle. Be gentle. Dude, I've, I've never changed out a nib ever, ever. Like I said, really? I, yeah. Cause I, like I said, I don't, I don't use pressure. Like I just, I'm over here just barely grazing the screen with my soft touch. But going back to the uh, whole whole um, the tablet, d did you feel because you were going so slow on your your tablet? Did you feel like you were how how would you how would you grade yourself on like a scale of like one to ten on how oh, I, how I synchronized you were? Let's see. I don't, yeah, it was trial by fire. Like the project, the, the art had to be done in like two weeks, so I really just like pushed through it. But you can tell if you put the two Last of Us illustrations that I've done side by mm -hmm. side. You can see that the one that I did with the Cintiq when I was new to it was like the lines were just way too fluid. It was like that freedom was almost too much. Mm -hmm. Like it, there's squiggly, there's there's motion in the lines that's just unnecessary. Mm -hmm. it, that gives everything sort of like a squiggly effect. Yeah. Um, it, and the other one is just so much tighter. Um, Which one? The yeah, tablet one. Now, the uh, the Intuos one is so much tighter. Mm -hmm. Like it was almost like the big screen and freedom just I got a little. And then also too, I was nervous because, you know, the first time around it was like, well, I'll just I'll do this for fun and hopefully it catches somebody's attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it never occurred to me that it would catch the game creators. It, like that pressure wasn't on. And then but then all of a sudden, like the second one was. Yeah. Actual client work. That's. Uh, what I, know, what, what, in, what I was saying was like how synchronized was your brain with your tablet? Like how, like your control control wise, like, did you feel like it was just like a fish in water or did you feel like you, you were always slightly struggling like it? Cause you're, you're, you weren't looking directly at a screen to draw and you were just you were kind too of, fluid. I would say it's definitely too fluid. Like I thought, too fluid. I, like I talked to so many artists at conventions who come to the booth and, you know, they'll see the speed drawing video and they'll be like, oh man, that's antique. <laughs> Wish I had that antique. Like, it's the only thing that's missing between me and perfection. Like, once I get a hold of one, mm -hmm. it's game changer. Like, it's it's all going to be different. It's like, yeah, yeah, in a way you don't expect. And it's yeah. harder. I felt the same thing and then I got it and it was bizarre. It was yeah. like, it, yeah, I'm looking directly at it, but it's not a visual thing. It's a physical thing. All of a sudden, yeah. it's like I forgot. And this depends too, though, because like for four years I didn't keep up with traditional art. 
Yeah. So I'm not used to, it, it's a physical issue of like my hand, there's a disconnect in yes. my arm, drawing with my entire hand again. You know, the proper form is to plant your elbow into like I'm doing now, like to yeah. make full strokes from a distance. And with the, uh, with the Intuos, uh, I was like this. I was like <laughs> in there so Yeah, tight. with it your was, wrist and stuff. Yeah, because you. So it's like yeah, you can feel your drawing, but my hand was like uh, like if you turned a fire hose off and then just let it like go wild. It was so it almost felt like untrained. Yes, I agree. I I, I went through the same thing. Is what I'm saying. So weird. what do you what do you work on now? Hmm. What do you work on now? You have a. I was I was a 13 inch, uh, Cintiq. Just been using this one. It's really small, but. It's uh, I've gotten really used to it. I think that it's really like you've seen it. I I, I know what a thirteen HD looks like. If that's what, if that's yeah, what you're thirteen inch HD, Cintiq. It um, it's really it's really convenient because I can take it out. I can take it wherever I want to go, and it fits right on this my table right in front of my um my computer. So. Yeah, it's a good size. I've got the uh. The 16-inch Mobile Studio Pro that I use mm -hmm. on the road, and that that to me I think is the smallest I can go back to is 16 inches. That Mobile Studio, that's a PC one, right? Uh, yeah, it's like their full their full deal. Yeah. And it's it's just collecting dust here, man. I hate that thing so much. <laughs> I think you mentioned it one time. I think so. I think you mentioned it one time, and then just cuts back to like 50 times at conventions. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I really did buy like a. Uh, I bought a laptop and a their yeah. new entry level sixteen to take with me when I went to Europe because I was so. Uh, because the Mobile Studio Pro was so un, I could not depend on it for anything. There was always something wrong with it. So I ended up buying like a, a whole new laptop and Cintiq for when I did uh, Dubai Comic Con. Wow. Which is uh, the uh, Middle East. Yeah. Right here. How was that? Well, you, you told me about it a little it bit. Was but... Bizarre. It was awesome. It was a great time. That's good. It was like one of those once in a... No, you know, I, I'd go back, but, it, you know, it's like once in a lifetime opportunity. It's like mm -hmm. just totally crazy. And I was like super nervous, but when I was in the convention itself, it felt like felt like any other comic convention you know mm -hmm. it wasn't too different there were uh there were people in like the traditional garb yeah. over there i forget the names for uh all the different pieces but um you know that's like any convention i go to there's people dressed up yeah in stuff that is stuff that i'm not aware of it's just if it's a culture or an anime it's like i don't know what that is <laughs> i don't know what that is like you know, yeah. that's cool <laughs> that's <fun. laughs> Yeah. I don't know why that demon drill has a pacifier, but I support <laughs> it, whatever, you know. Yeah, you do you. Which, awesome. Demon Hunter is still something I, I have to watch. Wait, you didn't watch it yet? I have not watched it yet. Oh. Please watch it. I thought you watched it. I saw you sketching it. I was so impressed. I was, I was sketching the main dude, but my heart wasn't in it, man. Like, if I, if I don't... I felt like your I heart. I felt like your heart was in it. <laughs> I looked at it as, oh, his heart's in this one. <laughs> He's it's watching quiet. it right now. <laughs> yeah. I heard it's so good. It is. It has its. It has its flaws. It has its flaws, but it's not perfect. But it's it's more good than bad. Marcio Vitromilla says, "In clips, you do have opacity or multiply? Yes." If you have any questions, you guys just write in the uh, just at me at the Jetty Jet Show, and uh, I'll be able to see your your name highlighted in the comments. A lot easier. Yeah, feel free to break up our. I feel like dad talk, like you have, like two dads at a barbecue talking about their TVs. Like, <laughs> yeah, what do you got? What do you got there, Jetty? You got the. Uh, you got that, <laughs> Yeah, that works for me, but I I, I gotta go up to sixteen. Or, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, looking at, uh, looking at like 
our engine is up like four lightning. <laughs> we, we got it. We got it there. Oh, got that uh, pro that pro stabilizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was running old into us back in the day. Old into us, yeah. Went through uh, about three different tablets. Question: Yes or no? <laughs> I lean, no, I lean towards yes. Always no. Yes. Let's go. Jay, you're, you're more of a yes man. I'm more of a no man. <laughs> yeah. We're just talking about, I'm more of a pessimist. You're more of an optimist. Yeah. But we're so similar in so many ways. My brother from another mother, Jenny. Yeah. I'm glad we got to hang out at C2E2, man. That, I'm glad that, like, you know, for a last convention experience probably ever, like, that was super fun. That was the worst thing. We made, we, we, we made it we made it last we made it worth it yeah that was so fun we had we had like deep dish pizza when we first arrived it was like it was really good don't get me wrong it was really good and it because of the atmosphere we got alex there um but there was better deep dish later when we like when we like bounced out of their place <laughs> <laughs> We actually went to a, a schmooze dinner and like it was the most fancy joints. Yeah. I, I feel like I was like visibly angry. Like <laughs> see my face I was like figuring it out. I kept asking What's the food? Is coming? this the full menu? <laughs> like, I'm like I'm like Alex, this is this is it. <laughs> this is it. This is all we're getting. Yeah. We must it's have spent like, some like fucking caviar or some shit. Like some you know, like yeah. I was like, there's a full menu coming, right? Like this is just this can't be yeah, we spent like at least fifty dollars already, and we're like, "This is like appetizers." Oh yeah, easily. I think I threw like seventy. I, we got up like mid dinner. Yeah. I just threw like seventy bucks at the table and was like, "We're out." Yeah. Like I gotta go get some real food. Yeah, we went some 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 real deep dish pizza. That was the best, man. That would made that made that trip worth it so much. We went there twice actually. <laughs> That's me and a lot of conventions, man. Like the food is. People are like, how's the con? And it's like, eh, <laughs> the food was great. <laughs> yeah. I went to a show in uh, Santa. It was some SoCal show, and I, I don't know a lot of people in California, so I'm like, hmm. those shows I'm usually riding solo, and this this one in particular, I didn't know anybody. Oh. So, I just went to like the best Korean barbecue joint I could find on Yelp. Yeah. Hung out for a little bit, and then went to the best ramen place like i had like two dinners like just i was just like wandering around eating to pass time and talking to my girlfriend on the phone like just bored out of my mind and it's like Aww. it's like well i had i had good food this is <laughs> in two dinners. this was in california yeah it's uh it was a really small show uh it was called i forget what it was called but it was like it was like one of those like specialty shows that's um, wow. It, it's, I mean, like, we're talking tiny, like in the basement of a Holiday Inn tiny that was specifically Ultraman, Power Rangers, um, oh. real, real niche, like Godzilla. Yeah. Um, and they flew some cool Japanese cats out. Like, I got to see, um, uh, well, I went because Peach Momoko, uh, was going, and I, I just love seeing her and her, uh, husband. Let's do her amazing mm -hmm. and like it was worth it just to see him yeah but the other artists Shint uh Shin shintaro kago you know the old school dude who draws like really messed up but cute <laughs> uh i google it but i don't want to like pull up anything i don't uh, know he does some pretty like insane <laughs> stuff i'm pretty sure it's shintaro kago but uh he was there which is like Crazy! Wow. I didn't even know that dude was alive. <laughs> and I got him. To do a, he did a commission. He did like a portrait of me, with a, uh, with like my head was split in half and like eyeballs were coming out of the center of my head. Oh him! Yeah, I do. I swear you'd recognize the dude's stuff if I showed you. Oh yeah, I thought it was a girl who did that stuff. I was like, it re wrong? Wrong? It's re it's really, wrong? really nightmarish stuff. Like it's very, it's all it's like black super and white. Cute. Is it cute? Uh, some of it's black and white. Maybe it's not. No, no, I'm talking about someone else. It... <laughs> it. It is my name. Sorry, Jet pronounced it right. <laughs> I might have messed it up.
Your sound cut out. You sound cut out? No, I'm still here. Oh, good. You have good uh, background noise reducing thing. Uh, I just I just shut up and started drawing. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so people always ask, how do you create a uh, how do you create a portfolio? How do you do that? How do you how do you get a job with the industry? And I'm just like, for me, you can't ask me that question. I don't know, man. My portfolio you, my portfolio did not work. That's such a it's such a big question like that's the first thing a lot of the artists will come up to you like, hey, can you look at my portfolio? Can you look at my portfolio? I'm like, I don't think you need me to look at it. I'm not the money, the investor, the the client, you know. Do you do portfolio critiques at your booth at conventions? I've I've done it, but like I like I said, that's not that's like that that's like the that's an old that's an old way of uh, working. I feel like in the art industry. Well, you actually went to like an art school. Yeah, and I, like I said, that stuff did not work for me at all. Like, my portfolio, none of my work for my portfolio got me any work. The only time I ever got work was from when I did personal things. And I would just, they would look at the commission and be like, whoa, hey, can I get one too? And then it would just start stacking and then I'd have larger and larger projects through commission. Keep, like, going Slowly. over the same lines and refining them. Yeah. So, like, when people come to my booth and they ask for their portfolio critique, I... I always say the same thing. I'm like, dude, I didn't go to an art school. Like, no. I'm not, like, there is a, a proper, like, etiquette and approach and form to portfolio critique that I just do not have. So I, if you're asking me to, like, go through a book of your drawings and tell you what I think, I can do that. Like, I can just look at what you've made and tell you what I like and what mm -hmm. I don't like. And, you know, like, as long as you don't have any expectations of this interaction, I mean, I can try. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they show me the stuff, and it's like, you know, you know, it's like, I'm looking at your body of work. I think this is your strongest piece. I think this is your weakest piece. Mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm not formally trained, but I do know that, you know, your chain, your portfolio is like a chain and it's only as strong as its weakest link. So mm -hmm. like take all that B game and throw it out, yeah. you know, so I'll, I'll tell people like, I'll be like, I don't think, you know, if, if this is your best piece, then this is definitely your weakest piece. And, you know, thanks for coming by. Like, I don't, I don't know what else to, yeah. you, you know, how yeah. else to, people out there yeah telling kind of them it's me in the spot you know like yeah you're helping I, them with know, a... it's like it's like oh this portfolio is good enough i'm going to give you the secret this is how you <laughs> this is the the two sentence answer to how you get a job in the industry and make a good port. you ready yeah. here here it is it's right next to my secret brush settings like... <laughs> yeah i love that I had one dude at MAGFest, I almost lost my mind. Like another uh, customer had to intervene and like deflect for me and, and take this dude away from my booth. <laughs> that happens. Because he, he was like, he's like, hey, how, how do you like, how do you like draw when you don't feel like drawing? <laughs> yeah, and like, that, that's a very um, common, that's a very common question. Sorry. How do you, like, I don't know, you're trying to like how to avoid burnout or how, how do you get to motivated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get yeah, you're talking about motivation? Art, art block. Dude, it got so deep. He was like, I just don't even feel like being an artist. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know what to tell you, man. Like, what are you coming to me for? <laughs> you, like, gonna... you want me to like talk you off? Like, how do I get you excited? <laughs> it's not my job, man. Get out of here. <laughs> That's your job. I, yeah, I was like, I don't even know why we're having this conversation. Like, why don't you go do... If you don't care, and no, like, you could start from square one. Like, go be an engineer. Go be something that pays better. Like, what? Like, if you don't want to, why? Yeah, why? did you like, slip? Did you slip into another dimension and suddenly at, end up in the art community when you didn't want to? It's like, let's enter this world. But I don't, yeah. I don't feel like I want to be here. <laughs> like I know, right? It's like, it's like how did you making you like, you know, is this like a family thing that you? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like what the heck? I, I got so frustrated. It's so true. Just, like, yeah, he like put his hand on the dude's chest. He's like, hey man, like, 
you know, for me, and he like took the dude away from my booth, and I was like, because oh. I wasn't even like talking to the dude, I was like screaming out loud. Yeah. I was just like, who the fuck doesn't want to? You know, I was like, I was like, <laughs> like Laura was just looking at me, shaking her head. I'm like, I don't fucking why. She's your PR like, manager. She's like, hell. Mm. Oh, dude, all the time. She'll be like, you need to go get some coffee. Like, <laughs> you need to step away. Oh, the dude. Coffee runs, man. Bring me so much memories. Coffee runs. You say coffee is nostalgia. It's like. Even just complaining dude, about conventions. It's good like. Times. Complaining about conventions. It's like, I take the worst day at a convention just to be out of the house. Like, <laughs> you know. I miss it. I miss it so much. Yev son reminds me of a teacher in high school. He was gonna start teaching and suddenly Char changed his mind and became a scuba diver after one day of teaching. He he stands up teaching. He's like, "Well, that's it for me. I'm gonna start scuba diving." Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine the teacher. Just I, like, I fucking hate kids. Uh, thanks for. <laughs> I didn't expect this. He, just, like, looks, he like looks across the class and just goes like. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it for me he's like it takes a long time to become a teacher you have to go through all kind of credentials get your like some sort of licensing and some weird process and he's just like nope it's scuba for me <laughs> scuba scuba or nothing and that's the origin story of scuba steve are you a college graduate or do you have free 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 formation? Uh I like I'm a graduate, yeah. I graduated. Alex didn't. Alex just self made no. millionaire. Just running around making millions. No, i I moved out when I was sixteen. I didn't even graduate high school, y'all. See, and there you go. It th it's just a perfect example. It's like you it it it's really depends on no. the individual. <laughs> don't don't look no. at this guy. <laughs> I'm a, fool, I'm a fool who's just it's all been a serendipitous ride. oh my god he's, a, he's an anom yeah. he's an anomaly hard work doesn't pay off I'm in like a percentile of like he's an outlier an outlier yeah, yeah no like, that's true you, you cannot repeat these steps and expect the same outcome by that's like true. any means at all I don't want anyone to you know, like, yeah, you ever know, like, you ever have, like, a loser friend that's like, well, Bill Gates dropped out of college. And it's like, all right, dude. Like, <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't Bill Gates, my friend. <laughs> like, yeah, hold my beer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. speaking of outliers, like, uh, you ever read Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers? No. Have we no. talked about this? It's a, it's a pretty no, good no, book no. that yeah. dispels talent. Like, there's no such thing as talent. It's oh, a combination shit. of three things. Oh, shit. Um... I think it's upbringing, practice, and opportunity. Yes. And the three of those things combined create mm -hmm. these outliers from the norm that we usually do amazing things. Like Bill Gates is an example in that book as an outlier who may have been like he is his upbringing. He's like a, he's a high pedigree. Mm -hmm. He's you know he's like a high society. Yeah dude at a college that was like one of only a few colleges in the nation that even had these computer systems yeah that were new at the time and also he put in the you know it's like it's like all of these things coming together and just can you lay, list the three again you said the three things that create outliers upbringing, upbringing practice and opportunity upbringing practice and opportunity and that that creates like conditions for becoming an outlier those three things combined are usually like uh, the recipe for outliers. I, it's been it's been a couple of years since I, I read the book. I can but see that. Pretty... I can see that. It can upbringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upbringing. Well, like in a sense of like you know, it's like oh, you're so talented. It's like oh, it just magically happens, huh? Like oh, you just you know. Mm -hmm. That art just appears out of e the ether, just you know, for you. So so great for you to have. <laughs> yeah. Talent. It's like, no, dog. This is like, this is like circumstance. This is hard work. This is yeah. practice. This is, you know, it's yeah. like a lot of things. 
you know, it's like you could repeat the same exact things and still not make it work. Like you could follow in, like do exactly what I did and still not, and still fail. Yeah. You have son says you can only really control practice. May, well, maybe opportunity. Well, you, you can take advantage of opportunities. That's why there's yeah, something called opportunity. Of opportunity. Yeah. You can, you know, people who live in Idaho versus people who live in Santa Monica prob- probably have, there's a discrepancy in opportunity uh, with proximity, you know, like what I've learned from living in Austin, being surrounded by other artists is more in three years than I could have gained in 10 years in my small hometown. Like sometimes mm-hmm. just being near it. Um, but upbringing, there's, there's not a lot you can do there, man. Like that is, yeah, that's a real role of the dice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly would not, I feel like I would not have pursued art. Um, it's probably against my odds. Just because of being, you know, raised in like poverty and, and the ghetto and all that stuff, like it was out of the question. You know, you can't you can't pursue that. And there's no idea, there's no culture, especially in the '90s, of like art being uh, a career, especially in the Asian family. Like that's that's shunned upon. Like oh, that's that's not that's not. You want to ge- gear them away from that as hard as far as possible. Um, but because certain factors in my life like man i was like something just something just like because I, I i'm not very risk what's the word i'm very i'm, I'm a bit risk adverse some people might say I, i'm not i'm very risky but um when it came to pursuing art as a career i remember saying to myself like nah, i, I can't do it i'm not gonna make it and i don't like i'm it's scary i don't want to do it i'm not getting enough all this stuff it was only until do you ever your family now. Huh? Yeah. Do you, do you ever like like grab your mom's head and like push it into the screen and be like, <laughs> "Look at that, mom." Look at that. Yeah, no, no, it's funny. Was no. your twenty five thousand followers, mom? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. Your, your Patreon. Like, yeah. How do you like that? Mom? <laughs> my mom's a fan. My mom's a fan. So, so, my dad's come around. They all come around after after you after you bring after you pay the bills. Then they're like, "Okay, okay, I see how it works." But you can't convince yeah, them until they see it. Truth. Like once they see the money, they're like, yeah. "Oh, so there's actually a dollar in this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hindsight. Right? Even the blind squirrel finds a nut. Good job, Jetty. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's weird. How can you convince them? You know, looking back, how how it's just it's like there's no there's no way you can make money out of art. It just doesn't make any sense to them. And it, and for me too, so, you know, I was under that that same kind of idea. Um, but it wasn't until my brother really really just like he said something to me and it really, really clicked. Cause I was like in my last semester in, in, in community college. And I was like, I don't know what I want to do with myself. I've already got like 50 something units of random, like all these different uh, liberal uh, general education classes. And I was taking philosophy and all this stuff, just, just growing my knowledge. Um, but not really focused on anything, nothing, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I was like, damn, I got a semester or so left. I got to figure this out. And, um, I was, I was lifeguarding at the same time. And my brother says to me, he's like, man, if you're going to, if you're going to do something, you know, pursue something that you're, you're, um, you're good at and make it a, you know, make it a pers- pursue a skill. I was like, damn. And then I was like, okay, what if I went to this small art college, a like really small, like, commu- like almost a like community, community art college. It was like total nineteen nineteen thousand dollars which is like cheap as hell for art school. Nineteen thousand. Oh, that, that could be another thing too, though. Like yeah. your parent. I mean, it comes from a place of concern, right? Like yeah. they, they, they're being realistic or yeah. cautious. But it's like when you're paying for your education, you're like putting real money down. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know like that. I mean, that's it's understandable. That's a lot of money to yeah. a lot of people, and yeah. it's like they might look at that amount and be like, "Are you sure you don't want to marry?" Yeah. Try an engineer or something. <laughs> it's the best decision ever made. I mean, I. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change it. Um, if I if I could change art schools, maybe because the school I ended up going to ended up costing me like a good like a good hundred thousand something. Like what that. the? Yeah, man. I'm, st- I'm still paying for it, man. I still got like twenty k, about twenty thousand left on there. So I'm I'm just chipping away at it, and I don't think about it too much. But my point is 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 that he said if you're gonna go to something, you know, make make it count. I was like, okay, so I went to this one. It was in San Francisco. And then I ended up pursuing art, and I was like, "Man, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. I I feel like 
it goes back to just like the, it depends on the individual because you look at all these students in the art school it was just like a small fraction small small fraction that actually uh, end up pursuing art and it was the kids who honestly would have made it regardless of art school or not i feel like i feel like in my opinion it's like these because you got everybody else failing so like, what's what sets these people apart because if someone assigns you like a ton of homework, it doesn't have to be art related. Say, write like a freaking ten page essay, you know, and you you don't turn in your homework, then that's up to you. that's on you. You know, so it's like same with art. When when we were there, it was up to each individual to go above and beyond the, the assignment or whatever it was. Um but but going back to the portfolio thing, I want to just break it down as an artist, like what it means, to, like, to be a professional artist. I think, like, essentially, an artist is is a is an advertising tool. Like you're an advertisement to whatever project it is that they want you for. It could be video game, it could be comic books, it can be anything. If you can, if you can grab traffic you can be a crappy artist too as long as you have a huge amount of traffic and you're generating you're generating the traffic and views then you are valuable to that company and you're, uh, you're yeah yeah go ahead like okay so you're talking specifically for someone who'd be interested in say a job is like a commercial illustrator. Well, not just that. Like even like an animator or like a concept artist, whatever it is. I'm saying in the, in the very core, of the nature of being an artist is that you you're creating some sort of appealing image that that pulls viewers in, and it's like the it's like the the ultimate equalizer. You know, like if you're gonna hire somebody to to design a video a game like characters for a video game, you want the best to represent your game. So. You could either pick someone who draws like a kid, not gardener, or you can draw somebody who draws like, like a, like a really good artist, like. And depending on how how that how how it affects the the uh, audience, it can be either way too. Because there's nowadays we have like we have the games that are like using sprite art and and gaff looking style art, and that sells. So in a sense, it's like it just depends on how how well or how well can you pull the audience. They can attach their name to. So in a sense, you're just like a walking billboard. Yeah, that's uh, your art as a service. Yeah, your art, your art as a service that yeah, as a will, service. Like, in turn advertise like a product or yeah. something. Not like not like your art as a product, like someone who would make art that would just be sold for mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's man. It's, see, it's like you know. It's like artist is there's there's so there's like sub types and there's like mm -hmm. all kinds of different you know. So it's like oh, I want to be an artist. It's like you got to be specific. Yeah. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm like. Uh, kind of alluding to, alluding to, or going going for is that like when when somebody wants to work and they ask you like how do I get my portfolio. Um, the people who are going to hire you are going to be people who are damn my brain's like spiraling right now people who are really well, I think we talked about the same thing last time i was on it's like art directors are human beings like you and i who yeah. browse art station instagram save cool images yeah. of different things and it's their job to connect those dots and recognize trends styles patterns yeah and, uh, you know when they need an album art that's sort of like you know cartoony or this or that or blah 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 you know okay. it like fits the descriptors it's like oh we'll get jamie hewlett of the gorillas fame to yeah. do this project or you know i think when you say like someone who draws like a kindergartner you mean to say like reckon like art on different scales or levels of uh style or perfect like uh you know like sometimes like Fine artist isn't necessarily like what a project needs. Mm -hmm. uh, could be anybody, someone who draws like a kindergartner. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess okay, I, I get. It. I, I think I want, what I'm trying to say is like, at its very core, like it it just depends 
on how popular nowadays, especially like your popularity level is um, to sell an art. Like it, I I know like a good ninety percent of my friends who didn't go to art school got hired for like the largest, the biggest companies and the highest paying jobs in the art field were just people who were just really good and popular on the social media. And those people are, are getting the best work. It's because they're out there and they're pulling traffic and they're like, man, these people are getting a response that, that would probably be good for my product. So can you do a, co- a cover for my, for my story? I have a story. Yeah. I have a character. Can you do something for me? I mean, opposed yeah. to what? Like, no one's out there asking to see degrees. Like, you know what I'm yes. saying? Like, no one's out there, like, yes, exactly. maybe talent agencies or uh, poaching art school graduates, but, like, no client is like, yeah. show me all the graduates from, you know. That's exactly what I'm getting at, yeah. It doesn't really work like that. Yeah. It, 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 a lot of people outside looking in, you know, a lot of the beginners, people starting off in the art field, kind of have this that that belief or that idea that um, it's very streamlined production lines. Like you get out of school, you first you build your portfolio, you show it to you show it to the lead director or whatever, and then they they hire you based off of that that interview. It's very just it's just very A, B, and C, like you know, it's just linear, but it's not like that. It all just depends on how how appealing your work is to people, and it doesn't mean like necessarily like like my style and Alex's style is completely different worlds, but we're both quote unquote thriving in, in the art industry. And I don't have any like super professional like industry level work, but I'm doing just fine. And that's like YouTube, and I have like Patreon, and then I have the art stores and then on the side if i decide to which i don't most of the time um i've got like so many bids and offers to work for so many of these companies now and i never applied to any of them that's this is what i'm basically trying to get at same with my friends um a lot of the people that you guys already uh, know of too they they're pushing away work and they're like all this all this work and all this opportunity going to them when a lot of other people who are probably more qualified aren't getting these same opportunities. Um, and I'm looking at you drawing your shadows. But yeah, it's like I'm getting oh, so <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, it's like the uh, the people in the like in my position, I'm getting work offers that I, I can't. Not because I don't want to. It's because of time. There's a lot of t- a lot of times it's because it's just because of time. Um, and that's a weird thing too. Yeah. Is like it's something I found. Like early on, I would never say no, and I'd really push myself yeah. to a point that was detrimental to either my health or the art. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, like like after like six years, I started realizing like, like I talked to some clients yeah. with jobs that I. Here's the thing, like when it takes me a month to do a piece, yeah. I know that I can only do 12 really good pieces of art on this scale a year. Yeah. That's 12 pieces of art a year. And I'll tell a client that, yeah. I'll tell a potential client that who's maybe trying to hire me to do something that I really don't want to freaking do. Yeah. Like something stupid, you know? And it's just like, look, dog, like <laughs> I can only do 12 pieces of art a year and you want yeah. this to be one of it? Like it, it, <laughs> the thing is to, to tell them all you have to offer me is money. And it's like, that doesn't, I could get I, every client, it would have to be money coming back, right? Yeah. But like on top of that, what do I get? Right. Like, do I get, do I increase my... Your brand? Ability, do I increase my brand? Do I establish a relationship with a client that I want to do more work with? Yeah. Like, you know, like what so, benefits do I have doing, taking yeah. on this job with the limited time I have? Yeah. Other than a paycheck. You yeah, know, and it's it's a weird position to be in, and you know, like growing up poor, it's like super strange to just yeah. walk away from money. But you yeah. know, it's it, there are other quantifiable things you get from a gig besides money. Exactly, and that's what I'm exactly what I'm trying to get at. It's like during this whole this whole lockdown thing, I've turned down about about six or seven different comic book covers. Like these are. These are personal covers for like what are they called? Like they're just small like personal 
Independent oh, like art, com- independent artists. Yeah. Do something on the front. Yeah, just independent publishers, like people who just want to make their own personal comic book, and they're like, "Hey, uh, can you do a can you do a variant cover for my?" It's not like some big oh, title or anything. Like self published. Self. Yes. Yeah, self published guys, and and each one of them are willing to pay like you know good money. And it's like when I was starting off, I would die for this stuff, you know. I would pay like I would get paid a third of that and be happy with it for those covers. Um, but I'm turning them down because <clears throat> I look at it. I have to have to weigh the value of everything. So I'm in like in a fortunate position. But I look. My point is this: <clears throat> is that I didn't apply for any of this stuff. And then people are asking, "How do you make your portfolio?" It's like just do you get good, pursue your art, pursue it with a passion, and get really good. And that's I mean, it's skill. What else? Work hard. Yeah, it's practice. It's like the ten thousand hour rule, um, <clears throat> and opportunity. And there's 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 a bit of luck. Um, there's also <clears throat> taking taking uh, advantage of opportunities. Uh, networking, uh, I think. Networking is a very small part of it. A lot of people like to say, "Oh yeah, yeah, networking from school." I put that I, like I put one that of an them. opportunity because. Yeah. You know, knowing people, knowing the right people, like that's opportunity. Yeah, for um, me, not so much. Like, I, I feel like not very many people that I've known have ever like, it never turned into like some money or anything like that. Well, yeah. if I hadn't have like networked with artists here in Austin, I wouldn't even know yeah. what an artist alley was. <laughs> like, that's right. something that I'm pretty fortunate to have learned from. You know, yeah. uh, getting invited to Heroes Con, like five years ago yeah i mean as far as as far as as far as um yeah you told me about that how you your friend was pulled into that right yeah yeah it was yeah, a yeah. good time yeah but i mean as far as um students when, when you're when you're a student wise people would say oh you're going to art school because you're going to network with these people I'm like i have no contact with any of my art friends any of them i mean i have actually like two or three and they're like a good acquaintances that i would reach out to every now and then for, you know, just a quick, quick chat and stuff, but it never, I never don't know trans- how art school was, but I'd imagine all those kids are your competition. Yeah. It never translated into money. It actually, yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot more toxic at the end. In the end of it, you realize, man, a lot of these people are like, kind of, it feels very freaking toxic. Backstabbing. A lot of the networking connections that you're going to get in art school, at least from what I've learned from friends who have gone to art school, is the connections that you make either with the professors or the programs that work with the universities. Like there are programs. specifically galleries that I say fence or not fence, but uh, they uh, what's the word for uh, when they snatch you out from another place? Uh, there's galleries that specifically work in tandem with. Mm-hmm art schools and you'll get opportunities with those art schools to yeah. that's more like on, on the lines of like fine art but um you know no, it's, yeah. it's not necessarily like i've never heard of opportunity networking coming from like student to student like i'd imagine that shit's like the hunger games like it's <laughs> you versus that dude's trying to take bread off your table it is it sure as hell is and i didn't get that until later like after i'm like after we're graduating and stuff like, hey man, I thought we were friends. What happened? Why do I feel like, like you're trying to play like you fool? <laughs> that was your problem, Jenny. <laughs> you never knew the score. I had so many mean girls situations, man. I'm like, man, I thought we we're all just friends, happily, just like hanging on, hugging arms and singing kumbaya and helping each other out. It's just like, oh man. Once they get theirs, it feels like they were left you behind. They're just like, man, I thought we were friends. That really just shows how insecure they are, though. That like, it, It's like watching someone who's really hungry mm-hmm. jump on the loaf of bread with, like, like huddle over it. Like, you know, mine! Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. It is kind of a trickle-down economy, like you said, with uh, getting hit up for jobs that you don't have time for like i will yeah. gladly pass like i'll get emails where i'm like look i'm i either not the right person or i don't have enough time but like i know someone who is a much better fit for this project yeah. or someone who you could hire like there's a sort of uh strength and the camaraderie and and like 
not networking, but I'd say more just like a sense of community that you can get with other artists yeah. that I didn't experience until later where it's like, uh, you know, like early on, I would just make art and throw it into the ether. And mm -hmm. if it, if it got picked up or if it went viral or if anyone saw it, like, you know, it's just, it was like me versus this giant emptiness. And, um, it wasn't until I started making like educational materials and interacting with other artists and, mm -hmm. and learning from teaching, like that I started to get a sense of like real growth that I thought was pretty cool. But I don't know if you would get that like with peers at an art school. I don't, I don't know. I've never, I don't yeah. know what that seems like. Yeah. No, but that could be cool. That could be helpful. Yeah. I'm just, it's just like, so I was just like saying, like, when I was starting off, <clears throat> all the offers I would get right now, man, I'd, I'd be dreaming for. So I'm <clears throat> obviously, like, I can't, I don't, I don't just take it for granted. Obviously, it's because I do like a, it's a cost to cost to benefit ratio analysis. You gotta weigh <clears throat> the stuff that you can be working on, the stuff that you are already doing, and if you're taking. Like, yeah, as we were setting up for the convention. I remember that. Like, yeah. I, helping you carry all your stuff, and then we were like setting up, and it was so chaotic. And I was yeah. like trying to keep cool, like I wasn't <laughs> yeah. flustered on a conference call with like yeah. six people from a from a big company that I can't yeah. mention their name, but yeah. you know, it's like, that would have been a big contract that yeah, they yeah. kept me working for like more than half a year. Yep. And it ultimately didn't pan out. I turned it down. And yeah. one of the things I told my fiance when I did was like I was like I feel like a weight has just been lifted off yes. my chest because yes. if I would have said yes to that job I would have been like that's all I would have been drawing for the next six months those are the only people I'd be interacting with professionally for, for half a year exactly. and it wasn't something that I'm like it's I mean it would have been a big client and a big gig and it would have been great but like it, it's not what I would have like to do for half a year of my life yeah yeah i know i know um two or three individuals who who are who have gigs for example with like netflix or like with blizzard or like with and they're all just self-taught and and they were they were getting this work not because they applied for it because they were just uh, just just out there doing their jobs, and so it's not just me that I'm I'm like in this, this position. It's just it's a lot different than people. Um, brain man would assume it to be, you know. As opposed to what? Like, what's the alternative? Like, there are uh, art agencies. There are agents and representatives. Yeah. There are, um, <clears throat> I don't know, th there are companies that sell you databases okay. of art directors and people who hire illustrators, and you can just make a cold call campaign. Like, I mean, there's only so many ways that you can get hired for commercial illustration work mm -hmm. that just being contacted doesn't seem as rare and crazy as you're making it sound at least for someone who is on a professional level in terms of quality of output like that's i'd say that's like a majority of how people are hired is just i mean i don't know i i've had a serendipitous experience like every client i've gotten mm -hmm. has come to me so yeah. i don't and again i'm like an out like i don't think that that's i feel like my data is so unreliably like lucky that it's not i can't speak for it yeah yeah so it's hard it's hard to give that advice when they're asking for like the traditional sense to like hey review my portfolio so i can get a job with this x company it's like man i don't know how i freaking did it like it just, just kind of just freaking happened yeah i listened to uh we were just talking about dave raposa earlier i was listening to some of that dude's most recent mm -hmm. Stuff and it's like he's answering some of the same questions I remember him talking about in videos that are like almost ten years old. Yeah, me like, too. How do you keep answering the same? Like, what's his secret brushes that you use? 
how do I become a professional artist? It's like, how has Dave practiced this patience? And like, I get so frustrated. I want to bang my head up against a wall <laughs> answering some of these massively open-ended vague questions. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I, like, I'll be able to answer it so clearly and, and, and easily, but then at others, like it starts evolving too. the, the thoughts on it. It's like, I start to, think about a little bit more it's like like i was saying like you're basically like a walking billboard it's like okay for example say you have your own story and you want so you want good art to you want you want to have good traffic you want to have a lot of people buy that game game or comic book or whatever it is yeah comic book so so the natural thing to do is go out there and find somebody who could do great art for that comic book so you go you go around and you look on Instagram or in social media, the artwork, and you're going to be like, oh, dang, this person looks nice. This person like you make a list and you get in contact with them and then you pay them. You, the, 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 the odds of you, you of you like taking submissions, I don't feel like it will work as as much. It's not like it's not like a it's not like a job at Walmart or McDonald's where you just receive an application. Um, no, we call those people scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's crazy is like corporations will do that scrub shit. They'll try and like, oh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a contest to see yeah. who can design the best new poster for the upcoming James Bond movie. Yeah. It's like I'm so happy that like almost every artist I follow on Twitter came together and they were like, How about you go screw yourself? Yeah. And stop trying to like you know, like take, take advantage. advantage of Especially and it's usually young up and coming artists that yeah. fall for this shit. Like yeah the desperate people who fall for this but it's like you know it's like holding a contest or taking applications or like you know <clears throat> trying to get something before you pay for it it's like that's, it, fucked up, that, huh? that's why art directors have a job dude like that's yeah. it's someone someone gets paid a salary just to put in the effort and due diligence to research the art and the artists to hire and manage the correct people yeah Instead of just this giant wide net of like, that's like something like save that shit for like the Denny's kid menu. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like don't put that don't put that scrub tactics in a studio job. Anytime I get like and you right. said like the comic people like self publishers, mm -hmm. dude, we got a Lauren and I call it the nope folder. We got a folder in Gmail just for those dudes who are mm -hmm. like, I have a comic book idea. I've been working on this comic for mm -hmm. about nine years. Because comics are like wine. The longer it just sits, it's better with time. Like, you know, it's like, I've, I've, I've had this idea for nine years that I haven't done anything about until I just now started scouting emails yeah. and trying to get, like, a quote for, what would you do? And it's like they have no idea what they're even asking. They have yeah. no idea how it even works. Like, you can tell just, like, based on their question, they have no understanding. It's like, some people do hire artists like that. And if... Yeah. I had a message for like aspiring artists like avoid those dudes avoid those contests avoid that scrub shit contests, at all costs. yeah oh my god what a what a damn yeah it's like hey we're uh we're holding a contest so you can better our website Dude, so people pay yeah, for this you like have like an anime james bond poster you're like yeah <laughs> yeah Screw, screw those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying I like James Bond. I mean, uh, it's a personal project. <laughs> you, see, you see the icon move over to it. <laughs> no, I've done, I've done, I've done like maybe one or two comments. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Is there something else I can help with? Uh, Siri. Siri. No one wants you. Okay. listening. Is that Samsung? That's Samsung, huh? Let's Google. No, that's the iPhone, the Siri iPhone. Okay, I've done like <laughs> yeah, I like the con. Uh, there's like a couple competitions uh, for like it's good good publicity, good good publicity for like uh, movies on DeviantArt. They would always like do these uh, competitions for like I don't know if they do them now, but back in the day they would just like there's new movie would come out. It's like hey, we're holding a competition. We're gonna put out like. We're gonna take out submissions and give prizes to the top three, and then you're gonna be. But it's like oh. when you have, like, 
a thousand, two thousand people producing artwork, you're creating all this, this, you're generating like advertisement for every, for everything, like wherever. Who yeah, because yeah. you're going to have to share, you know, it's either like a vote system or mm -hmm. it's some sort of thing where like the artist will have to share and get everyone else to mm -hmm. share and use the hashtag. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's brilliant. Thousands. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that shit's kind of over, right? At least hope that like people are getting wise to that garbage. Yeah. Like, I don't think a lot of people are doing that anymore. Yeah, right? I got time for yeah, that. I remember I was talking really about like the, the gallery scene out in California. Like these galleries would do like they work hand in hand with these uh, movie studios and they'd be like, oh, it's this gallery's show celebrating uh, like the one I was in was the Star Trek Into Darkness <laughs> the art show. And it's yeah, like, yeah. So it's, it's like, dude, the movie's not even out. You want to get 50 artists together yes. to submit pieces, to put together art. And it's like, okay. It's genius. Rest, every artist who chose to do Spock in the volcano suit, like, you know, it was like so prominent in the trailer. And then the movie comes out and it's like, that was like three seconds in the beginning of the movie. Like not visually or culturally significant in any way. Like, you know, the art comes out uninspired. It's like, everyone's just sort of doing this dance. It's yeah. Like, corporate dance it's like yeah it's all just native advertising for a movie it's free it's, advertising that's what it comes down to yeah it's free advertising and I, I like um like i was saying i've done it i've done it for like a couple things like i think i did two for two movies and then one for like uh udon capcom like uh like fighting girls of of the capcom the capcom genre or brand and I put my heart into them, and I was like, because it's so enticing. The rewards are like, oh, you get the Wacom pad, or you get the, you get this and that. You get so many things, and and it's so just like, um, you got a Wacom, huh? From a client game? For a competition, at times. No, for oh, okay. uh, uh, yeah, 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 for the competition, they will put out these things, but you're going up against like thousands and thousands of other people, and I never won, but I entered them. And it's like the company out there is like, man, we need to hire somebody to uh, make art for this art book. And then somebody steps in and is like, hey, what, what if we just held a competition and, and got everybody to do it for free? Like, hey, it's not a bad idea. So it's like really ingenious. If you got a lot of money, you just like, you don't even have to pay them. Just be like, hey, uh, I'm holding a competition for the top 20 best Pokemon drawings. Submit your drawings. I feel like what we're talking about is so oddly specific to like commercial illustrators in a way that I hope is helpful to like one person here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's change subjects. Let's change it. Man, for real. I'm just like venting at this point. Like, Marshall says, "We have some that kind of situation happens very well. It's canceled. Uh, canceled. Much... <laughs> <laughs> canceled. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Done. Wasted. <laughs> yeah. It is so hard to get the shading. Like, there's the shading that I want to do, yeah. and there's the shading that's truer to specifically that Ninja Scroll style. That I forget the artist's name. He did Vampire Hunter D. He yeah. did. Um, I think Wicked City. He did a couple other ones that oh, are just yeah. so good, and it's like. I'm trying really hard to find a good balance between my style and the style of this anime because I don't want it to be just like a derivative translation of what this art was. Mm. But at the same time, you want it to be recognizable and you want to celebrate that art style. I think it's going to show through. Balance. It's showing through regardless. Your, uh, your, your uh, style is showing through subconsciously bleeds through whether you you want to or not it just comes through like it looks like your work we no. think that oh, okay. kind of getting a little crazy with this it's gonna have like you see how the blood streaks are coming down i yeah. wanted those to sort of translate somehow into like bamboo shoots coming up and down or mm. like i i kind of like the the be... uh, blood streaks and tears to Double as something, or, or to turn. Uh, you can do silhouettes of bamboos. I see some in silhouettes in the back there, but you can do the blood streaks as bamboo. But I like the, I like the, the, 
proportion that you have, the amount of blood streaks coming from top. It's a nice balance of thirst. Oh, it's so hard not to go crazy with the blood streaks. <laughs> this is like the most conservative blood streaks. I don't know about that tile. Man. Oh, Lord. This is the... Rurouni Kenshin. Someone said Rurouni Kenshin. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not oh. Rurouni Kenshin. <laughs> Have you seen Rurouni Kenshin? No. It's the Redhead Samurai? Yes. I have not seen a lot of that one. That's a great one. Not, they're really good. All it, it covers the history of Japan, like an actual actual historical figures and and happenings and during the civil wars of Japan. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it it goes right into like in depth and a lot of the drug and opium wars and things like that. Uh, but if you do watch it, watch the the movies. There's three, four. Is it four? Four installments to the movie, and it's a prequel to the TV series. That is delightful. Delightful. Dude, have you watched that Japan Sinks on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, I watched part of it. <laughs> How far did you get? I, um, I episode seven or eight. I think there's only like ten, so you must be pretty close to the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty close to the end. Dude, Lauren and I watched that all in like one day. That that was. <laughs> <laughs> this was so dope. I don't watch newer anime, but I'm a huge fan of uh, like The Walking Dead or Gantz or any sort of like situation where it's like, okay, who dies next? Like, yeah. <laughs> take a group of people, real quick, <laughs> fall in love with them, take a look at their faces. Now let's just make a Deadpool of who's going next oh, and how. Shit. Like in Apoc every episode, it's coming. Apocalyptic nation. I don't want to spoil anything if no one in the stream has like watched it yet, but it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's funny though. It's like some of the things were like wonky as fuck. It's wonky. So I was like, man, yeah, <laughs> they kind of just well, yeah. they kind of two episodes where they're at the compound, or I think that was like a cultural thing that we just didn't understand. Like it seemed so bizarre and out of context, but I feel like it might be something in Japan that's not as uncommon. You know what I'm talking about? Where they go to the compound and oh, it's compound. like, you're like, is this a cult? Is this a city? Is this? I feel like what it's is a cult, this? man? It's weird. It was a cult, but then they had like a basement with like armed agents with earpieces, and it's like, is this a government established? Like, we were just like, what is this? <laughs> uh, and it like lulled there for two and a half episodes. It felt like nothing. Like no one's dying. Nothing's <laughs> happening. No, the old man, dude. Remember the old man on the scooter? Yeah. Yeah. Drinks in the wheelchair, catches two bullets in the back of the room, and turns around and's like, "Not today." There's the other dude. Dude, that came out of nowhere, dude. I was like, "Oh, there he's, he's gone. Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> he's going." For it. <laughs> it off like we, we were serious after like two episodes I, it was like right as i said it i was like i was like some shit needs to happen because i'm about to turn this off and as soon as i did grandpa comes in and just starts airing <laughs> oh shit that's what i'm gonna do when i get old i'm just gonna take a bunch of opium <laughs> <and run around. laughs> no Motorized scooter and just no. start airing people. Fucking do that. Man. Okay, little spoilers. So a few spoilers. No, they're not spoilers. They won't even remember that happened. They won't even remember that. Those are like... How's it come? How's it come? Switch over to mine. The more addictive companies make this social media. Let me see. The, and the, I'll always read the latest comment. It's, uh, let me see. Probably the craziest drama can be forgotten with people's attention spans, and the attention spans are getting shorter the more addictive companies make their social media. Yeah. Attention span is shrinking. Shrinking. 
trying to get that hit of, of dopamine. Where's my next hit at? Did the uh, are they talking about? Did the creator of that one anime you mentioned earlier? Didn't he get in trouble for something recently? Who? Which one? Who? Who? I, 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 I anime. Which creator? The Ronin. What is it? Ronin. Ru, Ronin, Ronin Kenshin. Are they talking about? Didn't that creator like catch some heat recently? Oh, I don't think so. I think you're talking about like the Evangelion creator, right? Oh, what did that dude do now? Uh, a tax evasion. What? Yeah, some sort of two million, three million, something like that. He's like, you know, the guy. Who, everybody's waiting. Yeah, everybody's waiting for him to make his next episode while he's over here evading taxes and shit. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> he's going. He's going through all kinds of legal problems right now. Poor guy. Just, you know, it, I thought it was crazy. I didn't know that uh, Evangelion wasn't in print here in the States. And then when it came out on Netflix, everyone was like, oh, are you excited? And it was like, well, I watch it. Like every year I put the series through. And mm -hmm. I've got like that uh, platinum box set. Yeah. But apparently it's not. It, it, it's, that, that's like $400 on eBay. Mm. Like you can't find the, uh, like the, you have to like find the old VHS and DVDs of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I got like two set, two two box sets of that complete. Buying a bunch of those, loving it. Ah, uh, okay. It was the Kenshin dude. He had uh, he got busted for child. Whoa. Kenshin yes. Kenner had CP. Uh oh, in his office. So he went to jail for two years. What? Yeah, one of my friends from Japan was uh, telling me something about like an old school manga artist got busted. I was like, oh. what? Damn, I'm sorry for the outburst, but damn, I did not expect that. Not from the creator of Kenshin. The fuck? That is so random. I'd expect it from the guy who created Pokemon. Does it have like any weird? You, no, you know, I'm talking about some of that anime. No, stuff, no, no, like... no, suggestive nothing. It's very mature, very just like streamlined. Like it's one of the most mature. It has none of that um, that lolly pedo type of stuff in there. It's just straight up. I'm like, wow, it's, you know, it's very, like, rooted in, in actual, okay. like, it, the, 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 it's not, like, cartoony or cheesy at all, like, like, a lot of these shown in on uh, newer animes that we see on TV. This is, like, serious, serious, like, as serious as, as Ninja Scroll, maybe even more so, it's a very dark, dark and, um, serious tone to it, the, 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 the movies, anyway, the TV series is a bit more lighthearted. But even that has that, that nice depth of flavor in it. So I highly, <laughs> highly, highly recommend that. What? Yeah, why the Pokemon, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> why the Pokemons? Expect something from Pokemon. <laughs> Not from you, Rory Genshin. <laughs> Not from you, Rory Genshin. <laughs> Any but you. Well, the the creator, the original um art art creator, or I don't know the details. I learned this from a friend. Another artist friend. Um, uh, he was a hentai artist. So, the original, like the main, I don't know if it's a concept artist or the creator. I, I think it's the creator of the Pokemon series. He was a, he was a hentai artist himself. So, well, who's the creator? Like, is there like one dude, like Granddaddy OG, Professor Oak, creator of <laughs> Pokemon or? Like, is it like a handful of people? No, no, it's always a granddaddy. I mean, a lot of times it's a granddaddy in, in, in Japanese anime. Like, there's always just one guy behind it who make that's, you know, it's like, it's how a lot of these, um, these properties get created. They start off with just one manga, or not one manga, but a series of manga to get their start. I wish I could remember the dude. Uh, when I when we were at Dubai Comic Con, uh, one of the guest artists, uh, another one was um, he was, uh, I forget his name. He was a really cool dude, super friendly. Um, he was one of the original illustrators of the Pokemon card art, like back in the day, like the Pokemon trading card. Yeah. Uh, but it was like it was like six artists at the time, um, or, or like maybe like five made mm -hmm. different cards. But uh, he, he was super cool. But he was like, I felt bad because like all my favorite cards were like the ones that he didn't do. 
because <laughs> there's like when I think of like old school Pokemon watercolor illustrations, I'm thinking of like the official ones that were in like Prima's Guide, um, the ones that were like the box art of the Game Boy, like that yeah. that one illustrator. But they actually had like four or five working oh, yeah. on like the licensors. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that multiple artists working on the actual the actual license and story and all that. But for the actual IP intellectual property of it it starts off with one dude and maybe it's different for pokemon but i'm pretty sure that's how how like most anime are made like and that's a really cool thing about about anime is that if you create your own anime series you can be you can be like just anybody on any skill level if you're if you're if your anime if your manga gets catches on then it will eventually become a, an anime and then it can become a movie and then they create merchandise and and you could just be like um i assume i don't i don't know i'm not like a super like man so we went uh to dubai comic-con we went riding camels in the desert afterwards <laughs> nice. and it was like me and a bunch of the other artists that got invited yeah. and um uh homeboy uh the pokemon dude almost got his head stopped in by a camel <gasps> and he was like a he was like a trooper about it. Like he, like the camel threw him off and he oh, fell down and the cam the camel was like, Oh, and it like <laughs> stopped and it came within, like, it was like a movie, like within inches of the dude's face on the ground. And me and my buddy who talked everybody out into doing this in the first place, like looked at each other, like, Oh, should, like we'd be like responsible. <laughs> We're like, Oh God, like, is, he's alive. Okay, good. Like, Whoa. We kill one of the artists. You got you know, it. You were with with one of the official Pokemon dudes. Yeah, it was uh, one of the. I feel bad. I can't remember his name. He almost got killed. It, by it, was, it was like all the all the guest artists at Dubai Comic Con got together and like uh, there was like this thing out in the desert where we uh, we like rode sand dunes and rode camels and it was like a little get together thing we did. Damn. And he barely survived it. <laughs> wow. He survived a camel attack. It was scary, man. Damn. I mean, it doesn't sound like it was. Yeah. Like, oh, like, I don't even know. Because when I'm in Dubai, I'm like, I don't even know. Like, 911's not even a thing out here. Like, what do we... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, hilarious. Oh, it's head stopped in by a camel. Like, I don't even know what we do. What would you do, man? What would you do? You just, you just pretty much sit there and look at it. Look at it, like Pokemon. There it is. Yeah, uh... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not much we can do. Yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, the adventures of Alex, the kid. <laughs> you didn't think our art life is exciting? You'll never know where it'll take you. I miss it. Dude. I feel like that was right the last camels. year. Last year was all the international conventions. Like yeah. that was the first time I went to the Middle East. Went yeah. to Europe. Uh, I did Singapore Comic Con, Dubai Comic Con, uh, the Thought Bubble out in the UK. Um, and I went to Tokyo like right after Singapore. Like we did so much traveling just a month short of yeah the I remember the virus that. that it's like damn like yeah. that might have been like that might have been, i don't know how this is gonna go but yeah like, that might have been i might have seen the world with the last chance the last opportunity i ever had yes yeah same here like I... become banned from every other yeah. place in the world i've never traveled so much in my life um as i did in the last year never like, it was my first time visiting a lot of these states, ever. Did you ever, you never came down to Texas, did you? That was my first time. Yeah, I did. Remember, I did Akon with Lauren. Oh, um, yeah. It's the weird one. Why, why didn't I, was I home? Like, was I somewhere else? Why come I didn't do Akon? <laughs> you decided not to. You're like, no, there's some stupid shit going on. I don't know. You had a table there. You had you had one. Well, yeah, Lauren, Lauren went and worked it for me, but I don't remember why I wasn't there. Yeah. I don't know. Last year, like, now it's like I would jump at the chance to leave the house. 
Yeah. But but back then I was like I remember we did like twenty weekends last year and all those international shows and I almost reached my breaking point. Like I was I was like, man, I want my life back. I want it's like a Twilight Zone episode. I was like about to have a, a nervous breakdown where I was just like, dude, I just I want to be home mm-hmm. for more than like a week straight. I want to be home for a solid amount of time. I'm about to lose my mind <laughs> doing all this convention traveling. Yeah. And then and then this happens. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what cruel, cruel irony. Yeah. Now I'm home. And it's been... Because I, I started quarantining right after uh, C2E2. So that's like what, like February, like March 1st, pretty much. So it's been like, like more than like 100 days. Yeah. I'm about ready to, to lose my mind. Like what I wouldn't give to go on the road. Like I even miss weird stuff, like yeah. flying, yeah. the Delta Sky Clubs. Like, <laughs> same the boy says just trolling it's 4 a.m gotta get some sleep keep up the good work thanks the boy art's looking good send it to you can't wait till it's finished it says by the way who's this character it's jubei jubei nope looks cool though is it good pretty brutal man if this is <laughs> the one i'm thinking of it like opens up with these people getting their heads blown up <laughs> Yeah, anime was doing all that before anyone. Yeah. Let me show There's you guys some. Brutal stuff in here that's just like just uncomfortable. <laughs> well, they were doing that a lot in the uh, the early early nineties, eighties uh, for Hollywood, like Hellraiser and Freddy Krueger and shit. Like, here. Is that what it was? Like just like hyper gore. Like there's stuff where it's like, how many animators? worked on that one shot of that head exploding you know like yeah. angel cop has got a scene where it's just gratuitous you're like holy shit yeah pretty wild pretty wow man you gotta watch it's uh it starts off that way too with the uh, original Roni kitchen the movie the redheaded good. samurai dude. A few episodes I've watched of that, or even just like clips, really. I mean, much the full episode. It's uh, it, he's kind of doing like the trigun thing, where he's like, uh, oh. super strong, overpowered. Yeah. But does the whole like hand behind the head, like, oh hey, I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm really oh. Of I am not have... <laughs> so really serious. And, yeah, so no, no, you're watching. You're talking about the TV series. I'm talking about the movies. The movies is a complete 180. It's such a dark tone in series. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I watched first. It's the prequel to the TV series. TV series, yeah, he's he's very slapstick. He's very lighthearted. He's like, it's like got some story elements that are serious. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. I'm so, oh, yeah. I'm such a, such a clumsy dude. But uh, you watch the uh, you watch the movies and you're like, holy she, this is a rated R. Radar, not joke. Check it out. Put a put on put on the first like t- uh, ten minutes, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. You'd be like, oh shit. It captures like the the the, the mood and the atmosphere of like old old uh, I wouldn't say medieval Victorian era Japan. Is it Victorian? Yeah, Victorian. The Edo period. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about like old old school. The Meiji Meiji period. So. It's between it's when they were trying to become like um, when they were trying to break away from the uh, the imperial shogun. They're trying to move away from royalty to like a republic or a democratic government, and there was just a civil war be- behind that. It's like people ha- half of the country. Well, I don't know half. Part of the country was trying to keep Japan um, ruled by mo- monarch, monarchy. Trying to keep that monarchy, yeah, monarchy. And the other half was trying to bring in, usher in the new era of uh, the republic. I don't know if it's a republic, but what is it? You have like a government that's ruled by the people, kind of like what we have today, modern Japan. What is that called? I don't know, I don't know what you call what we have today. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly a democracy. democracy. A democracy. There you go. Democracy. Yeah. 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 Pretty uh, much a democracy. 
Are you thinking of feudalism? Like lords and serfs and... Uh, yeah, that was... No, no, no. You're right. It's just democracy. They were, they were ushering democracy during, during this period. And it's the Civil War. It's just just before all, um, all that was happening. So that's what the time time frame is. Dude, just watch it, man. Just watch it. You should put it on tonight and be like, damn, this is freaking this is crazy. I'm not lying to you, man. I'm not lying to you. The, you know how, like, Ninja Scroll is? It's very, it's very gory and very action-y. Oh yeah, it's very actiony. Um, it has, it has a lot. It has some. Did you watch it in English? Watch what? Ninja Scroll. Uh yeah. Yeah, it's good too. I like. I actually watch it in English too. It's very good, and it's actually it has like a lot of slap slap slapstick charm to it too, like comedic moments of um, in Ninja Scroll. Um. But in Kenshin, there isn't any. It's very just like it's like a live action. It's just very serious, straight up. There's no ha ha he he's. I'm gonna do a funny move on you. This is it's it's deeply rooted in the history of Japan, so it's like really serious tone. It's like, Whatever the anime equivalent of like Morty, like from Rick and Morty. Like, <laughs> oh gee, oh god, oh god. <laughs> Look at that! He came out of the shower and I got so embarrassed, I tripped and fell on a titty. Oh, oh no! Don't you... yeah. What are you saying? Why are you saying? I don't get it. What the equivalent of Rick and Morty in anime? Yeah, yeah in, in, like every anime. You know when a dude like accidentally falls and trips, or like he like gets budged and he like accidentally grabs onto like a woman's breast. <laughs> yeah. And then he and he's like. Oh, she gets upset and <clears throat> they cut to a shot of the sky and oh yeah flies, like a trapper keeper flies in the air and yeah. she's like i'll get you he's like, no. <laughs> oh, all right <laughs> like, and then i'm like i turn it off oh my god yeah apparently maxim's the only like that show is actually one of the more recent ones that i liked and that was pretty good but that had one of those moments early on, and I was like this close to turning it off, and I'm glad I didn't. Cause that turned out to be a pretty, like that was all it was of that shit, and yeah. then it was good. Did you did you watch that Parasite Maxim? Par no, I haven't. Parasite, Parasite what? Parasite. Well, it's it's based off the manga Parasite, and they called it Parasite Maxim. Parasite's oh, like a, oh, the, the, the manga where Parasite. Uh, I just watched it, the series on Netflix. You watched it? You did? Yeah, he got he like he does like aliens coming on Earth, and he's just yeah, he gets like half inhabited by one, so he has to learn to coexist with it. It becomes like a mutually beneficial yeah relationship. And it's a symbiote. I just love parasite shit, man. Like anything with like parasites, I'm bored. So yeah, I saw that. That's nice. I didn't see the Maxim one though. Well, I think, well, this would have, I mean, it's called Parasite Semicolon Maxim. What, the Netflix one? Yeah. I, I don't know. Netflix, I might just call it Parasite. Did you watch it? The Netflix one? Well, yeah, the Netflix one is the one. It's the... <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's the one. That's the one, man. It's, yeah. I just don't know, dude. I might be stuck for the night. Stuck? working I don't like this fabric like the simpler it is the more i like it like yeah. i sort of add detail and it's like it's too much it's not it's not right it's too much too much I I just print the final like you know just like print this like what do i gotta go reshade all this it's for? done dude that's Reshade. done that's done right there bop, bop, bop. so now you gotta redraw it again well i have to reshade it in the format that's gonna work for screen print. Oh, you could do that in Illustrator? No, right here in Photoshop. Damn. We want to try Clip Studio so bad. Hmm. Clip Studio. That's the one.
Well, to summarize basically, what, am I, my, my, what I'm trying to say is, when I'm scramble braining, trying to explain it is, when I ask you, like, hey, man, how do you make your portfolio? The question is, man, just, just get good at drawing. Continue pursuing art. And if somebody likes it, they'll like it. They'll like it, and they're going to hire you. It's a there's so there's so many ways to uh, per, promote your art nowadays. It's so different from back in the day. Back in the day, they didn't have uh, social media, so it wasn't it wasn't like Jim. It wasn't very easy. Oh, back in my day. Back in my day, you'd have to walk more into an office. You had, the more work you would get. It's like an antiquated antiquations. It's all the antiquations. They don't do antiquations anymore. <laughs> <laughs> old antiquated actually japan does it that i think they hold on to a lot of traditions a lot of traditions they they tend to hang on to old traditions a little bit longer but I, even though i think they are slightly changing but but the traditional is traditional ways you walk into the to the manga company you sit down in your you sit down with somebody and they review your portfolio and artwork and they they go through it and they tell you what you need to work on and you go home and you try to improve it and come back and it's like getting an interview it's just like yeah, I feel like Americans are much more adept to the fake it till you make it. Yes. Bullshit. Yeah. Approach. Yeah, I have like some Japanese friends coming over. Um, I met them in Anime Expo, and they're explaining to us like, like, whoa, we made so much money, and then like they explain too much to me how much I made, how much they made. I'm like, oh, that's that's not much C considering how much they had to invest flying here and all that stuff. I'm like, whoa, it's like they work so dang hard so hard and these are some crazy people like they've done like playstation games and stuff like amazing games i'm like dude you should be like a, a president of a, your own company already like i think one of them is is like like that but coming over here like, he gets spoiled he's like my god you mean to tell me they'll spend 20 dollars on one piece of paper well they're not a real print like the conventions there aren't really print sales heavy like they'll no. do they're more interested in commissions and uh original works yeah who in japan yeah yeah that and also and also and also comic head or whatever the yeah. japanese convention is there my my japanese friend out there was like very honest he was like dude it's i don't know how well like unless you're doing commissions and originals i don't know how well it's gonna perform. yeah or or books they're love doujinshis like fan-made books based off of uh, actual actual properties and that's legal over there like you can like for example, Dojinshi of like if you wanted to make your own X Men book, you can. The equivalent. You can't do it over here, but over there it's like it's it's fair game. You can you can do it. Oh, yeah, that, same, that same friend gave Lauren and I a tour uh I forget, it's called Sun uh Sun Sunshine City. I forget the real name of the city mm -hmm. in Tokyo, but it's like Sun Sunshine City. It's like a district or an area and he took us to a it, it was just a shop of uh, Dojinshi, yeah. that yeah, it was Joking. just a shop of that, and it was pretty incredible because it was funny at first, and then we started noticing there were like glass cases that had old books or old originals by artists who were starting out but are now like big names in that scene, and mm -hmm. those were like really expensive pieces of work and like just held in like high regard, yeah. like very prestigious artists and. You see that, and you're like, "Oh, it's like fan art," and it's like, "Well, oh, yeah. over there, they're just that's more accepted, it's more respected, and uh, it's it was really interesting to see." Yeah. But Lauren and I were dying laughing at like we were just like going through like there were just like rows and rows of this stuff. Yeah, and it was like you you want you want a bromance between the dudes in Inception? Here you go. There was like a <laughs> seller yep. hentai. There was like anything you could think of. <laughs> you just pull it off the shelf and find it like yeah. no problem. No problem. You want me to do the splits? No problem. Yeah, that's the culture over there. Hopefully, it doesn't change. Eventually, I feel like it will. They're gonna catch on. They're like, wait a second. I mean, we can, we can shut these people down. But I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's. Uh, what's the word? It, it's encouraged by the actual creators. It's like, man, I, I work for this company and um, I want to I wanna loot it out a bit, but I can't because I'm part of this comp company. Like, Hopefully somebody out there who's good at doing art 
we'll do it. We'll do the iteration. Of respect. Of like, yeah. The people who do it are respectful, and the people that are, are respectful of the art. Like I think it's a two-way street, and I don't think that a lot of copyright infringement in the states has the same amount of respect. Like, yeah, you know, like we're not talking like bootleg sweatshirts of Bart Simpson, yeah. like sold on street corner, like right, right, mass that, mass that, printing that Jinchi, and all that stuff. The Dojinchi or whatever is like it's from the artist. Amazing art, yeah. like it's fantastic art. Yeah, true, true. Squid, squid. I'm going back to you. Let's go back to you. So we've been going on for about two two hours, ten minutes, making pretty good time. Pretty good time. Yeah. Who's Always. this? Who's this character? By the way, the boy asked Jubei. Jubei. That's Jubei, Jubei baby. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I was saying Jubei. He's kind of he's got like this rug, rugged, uh, quirky, cheesy personality to him. He's hella playful. Um, yeah, it's like serious. it's almost like the disarming aloofness and yeah it's like oh surprise he's actually like yeah, yeah traveling he's, professional yeah he's a kick-ass capable samurai who will take you on i love it he's like a superhero he's like he's got what is that he's not like um he's got like the deadpool a, a deadpool type of vibe at times he's comical He's like his life's at dang in danger, and he'll just crack these jokes here and there. Hella cheesy. Yeah, he'll like take a punch. But is that all you got? <laughs> yeah. His intestines come out of his mouth in like liquid form. Oh, that was nice. Oh my god. I can do this all day. <laughs> yeah, he'll say that. He'll say that. I'll do this all day. That's that's why you like him. I also, it's not an anime, but do you ever watch the old Lone Wolf and Cub movies? Uh, the actual movie, I think, a long time ago. The live action one. They just did. Well, there's a bunch of live action ones. Uh, there's one that came out here in the states. It's kind of like a collection of all of them put together, in like a chopped up sort of uh, uh, collection. But uh, it is. It's this stuff is so good. Yeah. Uh, they just the Criterion Collection just put out a Blu-ray box set that Paul Pope did the box art for, and that's how I found out about it. I was there's a YouTube video. Where... Damn, I'm hard of them. Just doing this, doing this YouTube video. But anyway, so he, you know, and then I found out about it. So I, I bought it just because Paul Pope did the the box art, mm-hmm. and I mean, like I was kind of aware of like the manga. Lone Wolf and Cub, like I had heard of it. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's like not until this thing came out that I like gave it a shot. And it's like, it's so cool. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, just... It's right up there with Ninja Scroll for like old school. Like, you start to realize like the, the modern day things that you like yeah. are super influenced by some of this older stuff. You're like, oh, that's where you get the, you know, using the sword to reflect the light in the sun <laughs> to blind your enemy or. Oh, that's where this yeah. picked up that, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yep. I've seen a, I've seen a couple of those. It's um, it's a pretty popular trope in the Japanese movies and animes where there's like a, there's an old samurai and there's like a, an, a like a, an orphan that he has to, has to take over or raise, take care of, take over. Take over. <laughs> You're mine now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you ever watch uh jackie chan's old drunken master videos yes yes it's like it's like stuff like that it's yeah like, it's like this is like old school cool yeah damn you inking that thing huh what's that uh, i'm like completely redoing the ear inks oh yep yeah let's go back Your inks in there. 
It's hard to keep track of um these dang old layers. Oh, There's this old, old, old anime called Kamui. Kamui. Kamui is a very famous ninja name, too. And <clears throat> I got it from, like, the flea market. Same thing. The little boy, cub orphan and then like the master ninja ninja um dude has to take him take him in and take care of him watch over him and he's like growing up with him really cool really cool and i i was only like five or six when i got that so i got early influence on that that ninja samurai world i was like whoa these are ninjas it's crazy those early finds man during definitive years, like yeah, the uh, formative, formative, formative. There it is. Informative. I'd be like developing. I bought my... carnival in like a VHS bin at a grocery store when I was like twelve years old. What happened? What was in the bin? Did you watch Robot Carnival. No. Oh, oh. Robot Carnival is like a old. What do you call it when it's like? Uh, like 10 shorts by 10 different directors. Oh, what's it called? Carnivals? Robot Carnival. Robot it's, Carnival. It's, it's, the theme is robotics. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, like Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. Yeah. It's like kind of like that, but it's all old school uh, anime directors. Oh, oh wow. Like, like Mo's in there for a minute. Um, you got that from the grocery store? Yeah, like just randomly at 12 years old from the grocery. I could have picked up anything, like. You're right. They had movie. They had VHSs at the grocery store, huh? For random, for renting and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like a wire rack bin. They just like literally be full of like. I mean, Robot Carnival was in there, but so was like. <laughs> God knows what, like like bad bad stuff. Just, like, <laughs> like, like Western animation, like you know some like Disney knockoff Bible cartoon bullshit. Like, yeah. You know, I could have. It was like the luck of the draw, and I got Robot Carnival, and it turned out to be so cool. That's the date. That's work of the devil. It was destined to be. <laughs> it was destined to be. Damn, you got a good one. Sounds like it. Well, yeah, you got a good yeah. one. Well, that that comes down to opportunity. Oh. There you go with the opportunity. Like you know, I put in the practice, but I'm applying <laughs> it to all of these titles that I love. That I had the opportunity to, you know, see. Yeah. All these older titles that I've done posters for, that I, you know, sell artwork of. Everyone that comes to the booth, they're like, oh, they have the same story. It's like, oh, I just happened to find uh, my, my older brother made me watch Akira when I was only 13. Or <laughs> uh, Lauren and I call them cool cousin stories because everyone's got one when they like buy a Cowboy Bebop print. And they're like, oh, I remember Cowboy Bebop was the first anime I ever saw. And I was like, Tsunami. And it's like, yep, yep. Do you call it know? opportunity or, or just luck? But one and the same, really. Opportunity and luck. Hmm. Yeah, I'd put those in the same. Because I think you can create opportunity, can't you? You can create your, your opportunity, like your the outcome, like the amount of opportunities you have is created, like you can have control over it. You can control your environment. You can control your exposure to... Like, like for... you can increase your chances for opportunity, but it's like in the same way that you can increase your chances for luck playing cards. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't control it, but... Well, that's what I'm saying, watch you can control the like, like I was thinking about my uh, position when I didn't do conventions, and then once I started doing it, then the opportunities showed up. Like I started getting hit up by all these people um, to work on things, and that's more and more opportunities that um, derives or is born out of it. Out of the first, the first thing was uh, the idea of going, and I wasn't going at all because I just, I'm always hella lazy. Until Ross was like, "Hey man, let's go do it. I want to do it. It sounds fun." I was like, "Um, they are all, they're all booked. You can't sign up for it." And the only idea of Art Artist Alley for me was ever um, Anime Expo. I didn't had no idea, never looked into it, that there were so many other Artist Alleys 
I was aware of like, like one more from in San Jose, but that was like that was my scope of understanding. And then that opportunity was always there. See, this, this is an opportunity. You can go, I can go, anybody can go, it, as long as you have the money. Some of these places they'll take anybody to go. So I, that's what I mean. So that opportunity is a matter of you just taking advantage of it and advantage of it. Once you're there, um, that opens you to a bunch of other doors. So so that's what I'm trying to say is like. Would that, in effect, be in your control, or is that just that a matter of luck? Like once you're there, and or is it just both? Well, like I said, I think they're like one and the same. Hmm. Like you got, like luck is like something that just like happens, or an opportunity happens. But it's like mm-hmm. you can increase your chances for luck. Mm-hmm. Like you can increase your chance, your your chances for opportunity. By, so like you're talking about proximities to opportunities, increasing your chances for said opportunities. Exposing like, yourself. Yeah, if you're gonna go, if you go to a comic convention, you're like you're increasing your, you're making a calculated decision that is increasing your chances for exposure to more opportunities mm-hmm. through proximity to the people who hire for said opportunities. Other people who have had the same opportunities, right. uh, and the people who support and lift up those who would fulfill those opportunities. Right. I think art is like the great one of the greatest equalizers when it comes to like merit or skill based work. You know, it's like you can't. A lot of cases, a lot of cases, you can't BS your way through getting a job. It's like it's. It's right there in front of you. You can, you can be whatever background you are from. The only thing they care about is how well or how, how good that art is in front of them, how well it will sell the product, for whatever they're trying to do. It's not so like subjective. Like you know, if you were an engineer, it's like there is a correct way of doing things and an incorrect way of doing right. things. Like, you know, it's if true you too. if your job yeah. was manual labor. It's like, you know, you get the rock to the top of the hill. And that's yeah. no, like, philosophy or abstract way to, you know. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like I need to move the rock from point A to point B. That's true. Yeah, art is actually actually not quite the greatest equalizer. It's, it is subjective in a lot of ways, too. That's why I said there's a lot of room for the outliers, for example. Like, you know, like, I'll use just South Park, for example, even though they're, I think they're just hard work in that sense. But you compare that, let's say the out of context, we don't know what South Park hard is. Work. Sorry. I'm talking about Matt and Trey being the only people in that industry yeah. putting out new content a week before the deadline for yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Only one deadline, and that's because of a power outage. <laughs> Yeah, there's sheer yeah, dedication. Hard jokes, but like those are some of the hardest working dudes yeah, in that industry. That's what I'm trying to say. I was saying that's what I that's what I said. It's like they, right? I'm in I'm in agreement with that. And like, um, I'm just saying out of context. Let's not say like they that that the there's no such thing as South Park other than somebody just drew one of these characters. Like you know what I mean? Like in this other scenario, it's just they they present this South Park character in front of you. And then you look at, let's say, a drawing of, um, like one of one of our drawings, like like just just fully rendered illustration, and you're saying like, okay, how are you gonna maximize your your profits? Am I gonna take this guy who drew this draws out this cutout person, or am I gonna draw this uh, take this uh, illustrated person? I mean, the I would I would believe the natural tendency is to take the one that's more rendered and obviously fleshed out. But then we fast forward it, and then we look at it now, and those two become like icons, American cultural, uh, historical icons of the of the modern day era of uh, pop culture, and we wouldn't have never like you like you wouldn't gamble for them. That's what I'm saying, right? Obviously, you'd have like a small outlier. That's who they are. That they, they represent was like they represent that small outlier. It... 
know what I'm saying? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, if you were, like, to walk up to somebody and there's no such thing as South Park, and then they bring this drawing to you, like, hey, man, critique this art. You're saying, like, someone just being like, hey, look at the, like, critique this, like, completely unsolicited, not a context, like, isolated thing, mm -hmm. and apply it to... Like, I, I, I don't know what... I'm basically contradicting what I said. I basically said it's... First of all, I said, you know, art is the greatest equalizer. Like, you, you can't you can't hide level of skill. But then I said, then you look at these exceptions in history where these um, IPs would be, like, South Park or Simpsons or Family Guy. You look at it and you're like, okay, um, isolated. They're, the skill level wouldn't impress very many people, right? Off the bat, you'd be like, oh, yeah, this is kind of... Well, when you isolate it, it's no longer animation. It's a yeah. singular, like, image. Right. So, it, like, like right there, it fails to be, like... You know, and then, and then it's not in motion. It's not animated. It's right. just a thing, like a piece of art. Yeah. Are you saying, like, if you went back in time and showed someone, like, an episode of South Park, like... No, not even episode. Just literally, just a, just a drawing. Like you're just draw, you're just comparing two drawings at, at that point. Two pictures. I don't know, man. It doesn't. I don't know why you would do that. It doesn't make sense. I'd be <laughs> like if I took like it'd be like if I zoomed in and took a one inch by one inch square out of your image. <laughs> no, my point, it, my point, my point, my like, point. Peek yeah. it like just a fraction of what of the whole, and it's like yeah. No, my my point is my point is you can make you can make like a success something successful out of simple as that it's like you can turn that into like a huge success and it doesn't have to necessarily be like all polished and and rendered and sculpted out like um no. like a disney film or anything japan sinks what's that director's name <laughs> he also did the devil man cry baby yeah i think he did devil man a little bit better at at first no. I, at first i was thinking i was saying oh look they look they spent a little bit more time at some of the the anatomies and character designs and stuff. At first, I was saying uh -huh. that, and then, then later on, you're like, "Damn, he skimped out a lot on these other parts." Yeah, dude, this parts in like uh, <laughs> he did on like, the toilet. Just her and the brother <laughs> on the raft, and I'm like, "What is this like bootleg Disney? Like, <laughs> like the hands were all messed up. Like it was, just, <laughs> yeah. it was weird." But here's the thing that was like his Tell style me. is fully rendered, but it's. Like I didn't, I didn't care for Devil May Cry Baby, and everyone was like, "Well, you don't get it. The director uses really <laughs> loose line art and sort yeah. of like sketchy style to give a sense of kinetic energy, and and it's it's supposed to be indicative of the motion and the energy in the scene, and it's more for the animation, not a singular static image aesthetically pleasing or rendered. And it's like, yeah, no, I get that. That's what he's. It's an animation style, or it lends itself to the animation. It's like I get that, but it's like. I'm saying that the style lends itself to laziness. Like, you know what I'm ah, saying? Like, yeah. it, it and facilitates. It, like, I feel like I'm vindicated <laughs> in like these later episodes of Japan Sinks because yeah. we're watching some of this. Like, who? Who? <laughs> intern that's like someone's cousin. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, someone got, <laughs> someone got <laughs> ripped on this show through nepotism. No, I sure as hell was not their ability to do on brand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> framework because yeah some of that jank as hell yeah there's 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 uh okay let me get my first point out at some point you gotta you gotta point out the fact that the emperor is not wearing any clothes that's what i'm getting it's like we all see the <laughs> bullshit but nobody's willing to speak up about it and it's like you don't want this to get out of hand because if this gets out of hand then everybody's gonna get that same idea and be like yeah you know what he got away with it he's huge I'm just going to, so next thing you know, like every other animation starts to become more watered down and, and, uh, similar and derivative of this style and it becomes warped and Picasso as you know, like at some point you're just going to be looking at boxes bouncing around on the screen, no faces or anything. You just, just listen to the words. Um, yeah, it starts to. At some point, it starts to harm the original um, the original idea. Like, style can only carry you so far. That's what I'm saying. At some point, it's yeah. just turns... It's, it's, it's like style versus substance. It's, like. it's, at, some point, it's, it's, at some point, it's just going to turn into laziness. Like, you just... 
fucking lazy. How do I feel about uh, like pixel art, like pixel art video games? It's like you look at some of this shit, and it's like, dude, even pixel art back in the day wasn't this bad. Like even pixel art like on the Super Nintendo was better than some of this stuff. Yeah. Like I tried playing like uh, Gunpoint or even like Katana Zero is like too much for me. I bought uh, it just came out like a couple days ago. It's called uh, same studio Devolver. The same guys that did Katana Zero did a game where you play as like a parasite again. Like, <laughs> a parasite. Uh, it's, but it's like John Carpenter's The Thing, but you play as the monster, and because of that, I picked it up. Oh. It was really good. Uh, I'm like probably like halfway through with it today. Uh, <laughs> I of it. But, it, but it's like super pixelated, and it's like, man, I feel like the style lends itself to just phoning a lot of background in and phoning some effects in. And, uh, yeah. But damn, dude, Blasphemous. That was a pixel art game I played that I was just like floored by how good it looked. It's one of the few games I've ever 100%ed just because I wanted to keep playing and wanted to keep seeing how visually beautiful it was. You said Blasphemous? <clears throat> blasphemous, yeah. It's like a Christ core sort of Castlevania mm. Metroid type Ooh. game. Man, my backlog is too long. It's too long. Too long, man. I cannot. I cannot. I just keep buying games. I don't play them. I got like a hundred games I have not played. Uh, my favorite game is the Nintendo eShop. <clears throat> what? Your Nintendo eShop? That's my favorite game to play because that's all I'll do. Like, <laughs> oh I'll yeah, play, you just shop. Like late at night, I'll like go. I'll buy a game. I'll be like, this looks like it'd be fun, and yeah. then I download it, and then I fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. I don't play any of the games I've downloaded. Yeah. Been playing Final Fantasy. Woo wee, woo wee says, "Hey, why the chat so, why the chat so sound like I don't know." We censored everybody. Everybody got canceled. We canceled y'all. Canceled. It all comes down to principles and work ethic. That's <clears throat> that's true. It's all it's all it comes down to is work ethic and prince principles. And how many colors you use for the skin? Yes. Yes. <laughs> also, especially how much, how many brushes you have? Yeah, well, you can see brushes. Yeah. What's your brushes? What's your brushes, man? Hey, let me get some of your brushes, man. <laughs> we can't. Yeah, but like, what's the brush though? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but, like, but like the brush setting. But what's your? What <laughs> but what's your brush say, bro? I've worked for uh, 15 different uh, major industry companies, I mean companies, and uh, I was a sponsor of this company and that, but uh, what's your brush, though? <laughs> what's, and then he's like, what's hey, your... guys, it's, it's, it's a mix of stuff. It's not just one thing, blah, blah. And then he, like, shuts the door, <laughs> and there's no one around, and he, like, opens a secret folder, and it's, like, got, like, secret brushes, <laughs> that ABR file, and he's like, yes, no one can know. <laughs> <laughs> you gifted my soul to a gypsy woman early on. Dude, you got to do it. I gifted these magical brushes that create the heart with you. Somebody make a meme of that. I want to see that. I want to see a picture of that. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, you start off with a picture of like the really popular artist, really well established, and he's just, he's really good. And then the next, he's just like hiding his brushes. Like, no one will ever know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. That and how many colors you use for the skin. The skin, yeah, they're getting so a lot. Very, very important. You got a lot of skin colors. If you use less than four colors for skin, your art automatically fails. JK. <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Gotta use at least five. I believe. Okay, I, my personal belief is that art fails for one reason and one reason alone. Huh. It fails to convey conviction to the viewer. <gasps> what? Is that right? Whatever the purpose of the art is, if someone looks at it and they see 
whether they know why or not that that art was not created with any sort of conviction, either in its execution, planning, its content, like style, like it, it just, that's how art fails. Mm. If it doesn't do anything for anyone, it fails. Mm. Those are very wise words. I co-sign that. I've seen some fully rendered, <clears throat> I call it glossy art that just, there's, it's just soulless. It's got a million colors of whatever in the face, and it's just absolute garbage. So what you're saying is you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta have a bit of ADHD. You just have to have conviction, man. Like you gotta, you gotta be authentic and genuine. Like the art that you make, if it. You know, if you're phoning it in, if you're just copying the next guy, if you're failing on a technical level for whatever reason, like, you know. It... You're not convicted. You're not convicted. <laughs> you're it's not like, why are, you creating, why are you creating anything? You're like, not convinced. Why are you even, you know. Yeah, you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in yourself. Gotta have a certain level. Failing is the first attempts in learning versus soulless. Thanks, Crim Sanities, filling us in with these with these words of wisdom. Keep dropping them lines. Failing is first attempts in learning. Failing, fail often. I feel like the, like uh, like Forbes. What is it that Forbes daily quotes of wisdom like? Like uh, like fortune cookie, like yeah. Okay. <laughs> fail and fail often. The opportunity of a lifetime means nothing if you don't take advantage of it in the lifetime of that opportunity. <laughs> what? Are you saying? I've got a few. I've got a, I've got a few of those too. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I like the f the part about eating frogs. Oh, eat the frog, yeah, man. Eat the frog. Eat the frog. That's a beautiful one. I really like that one. I haven't been eating my frogs lately. I've been just like having to dessert. Man, you got a whole list of books you need to start reading, dude. You need to tackle outliers. Eat that frog. Dessert. What's another one that helped me? <laughs> Uh, not really art related, but it's a book called Getting to Yes. Oh, it's, I have uh, that. Yeah, yeah, I have that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Have you read it? it? Uh, no. Part of it. Oh. <laughs> part, of, part of it. Part of it. I've read like a couple chapters. I tend to do that. It's like learning how to argue, argue, right? And making. Uh, it, well, successfully negotiate. Yeah, yeah. negotiate. Like objective, uh, objective based negotiations. Yeah. So like if you're going to work with a client or something, it helps you kind of. I think I ha I think I did read it through. It's just been you know it's just after you read so many books, you just forget which ones you finish. Yeah, I think I might have read it. Read it again. Get it to yes. Uh... How about we go back to your screen here? It's been on my for a while. We on for two two hour and thirty nine minutes, man. Time just flies at some point. Just swinging, swinging. I'm on your screen. Should I yeah, switch I back? Up, uh, I thought people might dig this. I pulled up some really early drafts of the Ninja Scroll. Walk them through it. This is like God. I feel like I did these like uh, like three years ago. I did like the thumbnail comps for this poster, and I just this has been on the back burner. Mm. For a long time. Holy doo doo pies. Let me have one. I'll I'll take it to the finish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> These are nice. Goodness. That's how yes, this is like the early thumbnail stage where I'll like just do some comps and some ideas. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put it in a folder and I won't touch it for ever. Yep. Um this is this was like probably a cool title treatment that I really liked. 
It's mm. wrong though that the sideways mm -hmm. be sideways. Right? Well, you'll figure it out. Kind of like that on the skin. With screen printing, I can't add too many uh, colors. I'm kind of limited with what I can do, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I did like the idea of incorporating like some blues into his arm piece and his uh, uh, what do you call that? The the handguard on his sword is that is blue in the movie. Handguard on the sword. Oh yeah. The other thing is like with screen printing, every time you add a color to the screen printing process, you increase production costs so much and like the technical difficulty of getting. Yeah. Uh, either like a blend or a trap in is really hard. Like, like if this was just going to be a matte painting, I could just go wild, but you know, I have to consider the screen printing part of it. Like that Griffith was insane. I think that was like 11 colors. And it was just... too much. Like, like there's, there's blends that don't even come through in the screen printing. Um, I think, like, compared to what you saw digitally and what actually gets printed. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Your skin color right now is the same as your drawing. It's like pitch-ass red. Oh, uh, yeah, it's because <laughs> the centip is so big, it's like bouncing back into that's, my face. That's crazy. It's like so great. That's crazy. The blues and the reds, man. It's like a, you're like a DJ. You like the <laughs> art DJ. Yeah. Pretty crazy, man. It's like a little spaceship in here. <laughs> I might be stunned for the night, though. I feel like I'm stuck. You stunt for the night? Started on that. I fixed that ear. I really liked it. Kind of played around with some rim highlights on the robe. Yeah. Real lazy fill on the glove, arm. I'm like super crazy about. Still haven't figured out these shades on the face. I like the other one better. It's more subtle, more flat looking. That one's like gradients. Yeah, I like the flatter look there. Yeah, I know, right? Like just the flat. If you do, it's I true think. To the style. Let me see, see, see. Go, go back to one layer. I think yeah, like two layers of gradients. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, the, the actual like, gradient fills? Yeah. That one, and then... Yeah, that starts to round off the character a bit much. That Those darks are nice, though. Oh, this like... should continue. Genma! Hey, Jetty, do you mm -hmm. have any advice for aspiring art streamers? Uh, I'm I'm the worst person to ask about streaming. I'll tell you that. Just use OBS. OBS is great. I, I would suggest that. Um, yeah, I'm not much of a streamer actually. I I, uh, I do it from time to time. I should be more consistent. But um, I just I just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. Put yourself out there. Just gotta do it. If you have um, information to give, that's always helpful. People always, people are always um, happy to receive information. Uh, and the hardest one is, go ahead. Uh, take take an audit of your screen time. Like when I watch videos of artists, yeah. if it's just them, if it's just like dead on their face or if it's too much of them just like talking to the screen i will skip that shit like you know, <laughs> do an audit of screen time and if it is not like 75 percent pen to pad like you actually drawing just don't yeah. even post that yeah i agree i agree completely i mean that's like any video or stream i try and watch like you ever like you ever like youtube like uh like an iPad or like something you're like thinking about buying and the video is like, it takes like four minutes before the dude even like cuts to a shot of like what he's talking about. Yeah. Or it's like just the chick for like two or three minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's my two things. Yeah. 
that, I guess that would be an audit of your content and the value of your content. Yeah, I, 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 I try to try, I try, I always fail, um, to keep the, the topics moving. But if I'm struggling with my drawing, I will, my, my brain gets all jumbled up and it sounds like an excuse, but it's like, I'm trying to like explain complex information and ideas that I'm, I've always thought about while figuring out a drawing. So having a friend with you that you can switch off to and just like talk it out, they can handle the drawing while you talk or that's one thing if you, if you can, if you can get somebody to stream with. Yeah, that helps. Like, I don't know how dudes at conventions can sit at the table and draw. Yeah. And then it's like this, and then you get out of this. I think because they're they're they're, bring, they're actually talking directly about the drawing itself. Like we're we're talking about things that are had, like are way out there, not related to our actual drawing. Sometimes you're in in the flow, and it does work hand to hand. You're like you can, you can draw, and do it at the same same time. Um, but a lot of time, it's just like. <laughs> Streaming with you, buddy. You get me distracted. You're talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Gotta have a good balance between drawing and talking. Yeah, be sure you can continue work on a piece for hours. I personally can't work for more than two hours because I get stuck. I got you. I'm trying to properly structure my stream, so that definitely helps. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, no problem, man. Good luck on them streams. Yeah, I'm just the worst. Just just because I'm not like I I'm not consistent. I'm not consistent. My streams go on for too long. I know the problems that I have. I stream for too long and all these things. <laughs> I'm late. <laughs> That's my bad this time. I don't stream at all, dude. The couple times I've done this is uh, the only times I've really ever streamed. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to do a little more regular. Unless you're out this stuff. Yeah. Unless I'm doing it with you. Yeah. It's just. Doing it more regularly to get you in the, it's all about, it's because it's like all, all about practice. The more you do it, the more you're comfortable you get. And, um, yeah, you just become more comfortable in, in talking and it's not going to feel so like when, when me and Alex st stream, it seems like these last couple times is when we like are catching up and when you're catching up and streaming, it's like. You spend like two hours just talking and catching up and <laughs> you're not working. Um, but if we can do this more often, then we don't have to do the, the catching up part. will be out of the way and we just focus on s sketching and um, yeah. here how much longer let's end this at uh let's end this at uh 10 more minutes you got any last things let's yeah some a set of time it's gonna be th in 10 minutes it'll be an e even three hours oh my goodness i'm like falling asleep my friend <laughs> I, can do ten, I can do 10 minutes go do 10 more minutes i can do 10 more minutes i don't know what i can contribute in terms of what we're talking about i don't stream at all so i have no streaming advice <laughs> Uh, we, uh... Yeah, sometimes, you know, you just, uh... You just bada ba boom pieces. Wanna be boop -bop, continental breakfast? <laughs> continental breakfast. Continental breakfast. <laughs> it is good catching up with you, though, man. I'm glad you hit me up to Hell yeah. do this. Of course. Quarantining yeah. has been, like, just... I feel like my social skills have just atrophied. Have you found that out? Have you, like... Yeah, you're like going to public and realize you've just forgotten how to <laughs> speak to another human being. Yeah, the only one that's getting tripped up by this. No, me too, man. I'm sitting there like, like, okay, what's your order? I'm just like, uh, uh. <laughs> number number two. Like, <laughs> thank you, goodbye. <laughs> like, wait, wait, just let's order food. I forgot to get the food. Oh shit. I finally trimmed my beard. I was just gonna let it go completely yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, 
it actually connected with my chest hair. <laughs> oh shit! Like it grew, That's... it grew all the way down, like <laughs> even my chest hair, and it was the weirdest looking. Uh, oh. Lauren hated it. I ended up, so I ended up trimming the bo the bottom of it. Oh, why'd you trim it, man? That'd be so cool. We trimmed the bottom of your your hair from. I, I trimmed like the I trimmed like my neck, and then I trimmed the sides too, because like. A beard gets out of control the worst, like, just when it comes out on the sides. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't, like, I'm letting it grow up, like, right here. It's, like, growing into my eyebrows. It's, like, coming <laughs> up into my cheeks. I look dirty. <laughs> Let me see how that is. Gonna switch but it's, like, you know, I don't have to go to a convention. I don't have to do anything. Like, I don't have to go out to the public for a while. Like, yeah. I'm going to see how crazy it can get. I like it wild. <laughs> this is regular, Alex. <laughs> Man, your beard must grow fast, huh? It's been, well, I mean, I had it before the before the deal, but if you don't, yeah, yeah. if you don't keep up with it, like trimming it, like it yeah. can get pretty crazy. Yeah. But I always used to like buzz my head before a convention. <laughs> That's what's wild. It's like actually like having hair and stuff. Like, <laughs> I, this is like. It's all curled up, but like it's not. Nice. It's like hot. It's nice. You're like, Lord, it's hot. Why is it so hot? It's <laughs> like, oh, I'm not used to having like two pounds of hair on top of my dome. No, that's good. Look good. Are you guys staying? Are you guys getting stagnant? What are you guys doing for quarantine? You staying sharp? Uh, you mean like just exercising and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Spiritually, I, I don't know. Like. Yeah, yeah. I've been. Mean... However. Yeah, man, we've been good. We just, uh, I fell off this last week. I mean, exercise is kind of built into a routine ever since this quarantine. So I was so strong on exercise, man. I'm so consistent. This last week, I just turned into a potato because I'm trying to finish this this by tomorrow. This is like deadline. I have to finish this and then like three ludes, by the way. This and two other poses will be included in the uh, Patreon rewards. Um, yeah so i have to finish this by tomorrow tomorrow afternoon and so i paused all of my freaking exercising the past five days and just like man gain weight so fast one week and i'm just like i got pot belly again that pot pot of potatoes but otherwise we're, we're great how about you guys been doing been doing yoga <laughs> what are you doing over there? Yeah. Just trying to, try to stay away. Just stand up. Uh, oh, I'm talking. Oh yeah, you're in California time, aren't you? Yeah. It's oh, like, sh I forgot. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, like midnight over there. Yeah, it's one o'clock. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry, man. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't done any workout. I, I had a. Per I had two personal trainers, all fall and last winter. Yeah. Uh. Go, I've seen them four times. Seen each of those dudes collectively four times a week. Yeah. And then, as soon as in March, stopped seeing them. Stopped going to the gym entirely. Stopped working out at home. Yeah. And you know it's weird. I've actually lost weight in the quarantine, but mm. it's all been from like muscle just disappearing, yeah. like just my body eating itself, like atrophy. Yeah. So it's like I've lost weight, but I'm actually like not the not the weight that you want to lose. Like skinnier, yeah. Like Lauren's like, you know, it's crazy. Like uh, she's like, uh, you know, it's like you're like wasting away. So, you know, mm -hmm. only my drawing hand is the only only muscle that's like really getting any exercise. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then uh, then I put a pole out there. Mine's is so easy. I just draw it. Uh, I usually draw what I'm actually engaged in. So, like, right now I'm playing Final Fantasy. Uh, yeah. As far as themes and stuff, I'm very straightforward. Just, like, I explore with poses, 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 poses. One, one grows off the other and just becomes a set of iterations and ideas um, springing out from another. The one before. <laughs> yeah. What about you? I love. I mean, I illustrate alternative film posters. So I turn to 
old masters like Drew Struzan. Noriyoshi Orai is probably my most favorite uh, painter and poster artist. Just, you know, the old greats that came before me. Dude, all the, I mean, all this shelf right here is like, almost all of this is, what do we got? We got, like, these two books here are just old on. Tokyo, uh, old uh, horror and exploitation uh, movie posters from uh, back in the day. Um, yeah. Old Japanese film posters. We're talking like real old. Damn. And some of the, some of these like old Japanese posters are freaking wild. Some of these are so cool. Like some of this just, just doesn't even make sense, man. Like, like some of this is just so bizarre. And it's not like it doesn't look anything like the art, that, like that I make in its style. But it's uh, you know it's just. It's stuff that makes me want to draw. Like, it, it's seeing another creative dude mm -hmm. just killing it that makes me want to do the best I can do. Like, it's not too close. It's weird. Like, when people come over and they see the art books or the art on the walls, they're like, oh, this isn't anything like your style. And it's like, yeah, I don't want, like, you know, I don't, I don't want to create, like, derivative art, but it's stuff that, you know inspires me yeah but not in a like a literal sense yes it's more so you know it's just dope old movie posters that make me want to make dope new movie posters it's inspiring you can take all yeah a lot of times some things that just don't look related and you can t you can pull a lot from it and it inspires you in a lot of other ways than literal literal ways all from here to here is like all Noriyoshi Orai books. Whoa. And these, these are like, this is probably like, I want to say close to like a grand. Uh, I, th this collection I've found book by book in the three times I've visited Japan, uh, going to like Nakano Broadway or uh, what, what's Book City? Is that Jimbo Cho? I don't know. Man. Like, like. I like scrap like looking for these out of print art books this dude is so dope you've definitely seen his stuff you know those old godzilla movie posters yes yes then you've seen you've seen Ryoshi Ori's work this oh. dude is phenomenal so going to your favorite artist for inspiration masters you admire and drawing poses and iterating until an added magically pops up yeah disconnected and reconnecting it's weird it does that i think it's because i use my vpn vpn tends to drop in the middle every now and then but yeah you're you're good go ahead oh well, i was just saying that uh it's not magical it's your input affects your output mm -hmm. it's uh you know trash goes in trash comes out trash goes in good goes stuff, out good stuff goes in good stuff comes out like you know you can't Damn. Create you can't create something from nothing, so you need to make sure that what you're putting in yourself, visually, creatively, like Ooh, you know, well, ain't that the truth? It's like food. You can't start off with shit ingredients. You gotta start with the fresh, fresh good ingredients, high yeah. quality. You're gonna have good food. You don't have to do much to it. It should be edible from the moment. Not necessarily, but yeah, you should be able to eat it at any stage. <laughs> What's the, have you read the book Steal Like an Artist? Uh, I've heard that phrase, but no. Oh, that's a really good one. But it talks about going back and visiting old masters and who inspire you and checking out their inspirations. And uh, I found there's like a lot of value in researching not just like the visual, not just the art that inspires you, but the people who inspire you and their their history and their pasts and their experience as an artist yeah oh like you know their their journey so not so much as like just the pretty pictures that they make but mm. kind of their their whole experience like that kind of helps motivate yeah, yeah, me yeah. too all that i just biographies of like the artists and stuff seeing their yeah journey. it's inspiring man especially the underdogs dude like like when you look in like drew struzan's history like that dude is the definitive 
movie poster artist. Like that guy created a genre, a style. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then you watch behind the poster, whatever that true streets documentary is. And it's like the most humble down to earth dude. That was just, uh, he was a, a painter at a record store back in the day. Like, you know, before they had like before large format printing and stuff like that, they would just have artists paint the album art of new releases on like a, six by six foot panel to put in the record store windows and drew struzan was like he was employed as one of those painters and you're just like you know if like yes dropped a new album he'd like paint the album art and they wouldn't and they, they wouldn't mass produce it it would just be one illustration you're saying. i mean I, I i think they would it's not like the printers didn't exist i just i don't think that like like now a record company puts an album out and they will send vinyl banners to whoever the hell wants to sell them you know it was like yeah. i guess it was it, the printing industry was more affordable or accessible. I don't know, but mm. all I know is there, there used to be like a whole scene of you know painters that would be employed for signage, and he was one of them. I mean, that dude went from nothing to just super hard work, great work. Mm -hmm. And uh, What's his you name? know, like. Like an underdog story, like that's that stuff. Just it's not just the pictures. It's like the journey really motivates me. What what's his what's his name again? Drew Struzan. He did like the Drew? Back to the Future posters, the oh, Indiana Struzan. Jones posters, the Harry Potter posters, oh, the Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's him. Oh, yeah, of that's, course that's you know who Drew he Struzan. is. Sw large spoons, swagap, swagapino. 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 <laughs> Mr. Yacarino. Mr. Yacarino. Yacarino. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we should end this now. I don't really have anything else. Yeah. I just keep working on this here. I want to keep going. I do. I have, I have other thoughts and stuff, but... um. Was, it's getting to that late night point where you ever like do more damage than good to a <laughs> piece of art like the more tired you get you just refuse to press save and close and yeah you just start messing with stuff and it's you like wake up with a fresh eye the next morning and you like look at like what did i do <laughs> yeah you're just like you're drunk and stupid the whole time working on this oh yeah just like running on fumes how the hell like, i get in this stage over here yeah. um but what I, was, what I was gonna say actually the last thing i was gonna say was um now we can say it for another time. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> secret. It was the secret. The secret <laughs> everything. You know what? Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Like, Will thank Jenny you. Can you his secret brush settings? <laughs> Will Alex stop angry man ranting? Oh, shoot. I got next time. I'm just sitting here charging up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, they hella cheap they hella cheat on you cause like cause like Goku would start like you charging up you ever watch you watch Dragon Ball Z oh of course the the Z the Z sagas yeah you talking about like Cell yeah Boo. oh yeah 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 I think we talked to him yeah he would like they would like they would he would psych you out he would go up one gear he would like ah, oh shit he's getting stronger Ah, and then it'll go back down to like, like gear two. Ah, like that's not fair. You were already at number eight. And he started I did a poster for the Cell Game Saga. I don't, I don't think you've seen it. Really? It's not on my website. It's not my strongest piece. I did it for a two-man show I had at a gallery uh, like four years ago. Shoot. Why don't you? Yeah, it's like Cell dudes and stuff. It's not great. Like, you want to talk about, like, doing an anime poster and differentiating your yeah. style from the source material without being derivative? Like, that one I felt like was was not a good enough job, like, being my own voice, like, my own visual voice that I just, I don't even put it on my website. All right. I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll let go. you take it. Eventually, but, like, let's, let's end the stream for now. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. All of you guys who stuck around to the very end. This crazy drunken stupor of a stream. You know we weren't drunken. Thanks, 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 Alex, for helping me with this stream. And. Oh.
please. Got me on it. Yeah, man. Let them know where they can find you. What's a good uh, place to find you? That kid? ThatKidWhoDraws.com. Yep. Here Instagram, ThatKidWhoDraws. Instagram, Twitter. Your website's all on there, so that's probably a good place to start. Yeah, I know rabbit holes out to the different stuff, but mostly it's just Instagram or my dot com. Yeah. All right, bros. This was the Jedi Death Stream. Oh, look at the little man. The Jedi Death Stream. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Catch you guys later. Take care. Thanks. Have fun, children. I'm going to put this music on when we have a little, a little chat with that kid over here. Take care, you guys. Bada bat boom. Nations. <laughs>